I was always thinking um, that at some point in my life, I probably could have been a like a fedora type of a guy. I never was. Yeah. But like it might be time to p- pull out a fedora, but make it the brown leather hat that Mickey wears. Why don't you oh, just try yeah. it? Do you think I should? You should just try it and you, see how it does for you. Well, I you think know the rule. Especially with your long hair, I think it would actually you think accent so? it. Like, get a brown one specifically. Okay. Like, like he has. I just don't think fedoras... Um, I think there's some rules on fedoras that we should talk about. One, only one fedora per crew. Yeah. Okay, like, you yeah. cannot have multiple people wearing fedoras at no. the same time in the same crew. No, you can't rat pack it. No, you know, no, you no, gotta, no. You gotta have one guy well, who's you, the fedora guy. You can't wear just, like, a graphic tee with a Ooh. fedora. It has to be like you have to be wearing yeah. like a jacket with it, like a cool leather jacket or like, you know, whatever underneath. But you need are a you jacket. A, are you allowed to like go sideways with it kind of like a sideways tilt or does it have to go straight on? Or even, can it can it kind of be off the backside? You're you're headed into punching territory. Uh, like people yeah. are going to get mad at you for that. OK, uh, you got to be careful because you're 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 one step away from professional ska band skanker. And then you're one step away from, you know, in his parents' basement. Really need you to be but able to still handle wears it. this, you know? Like, we need you to know the rules, <laughs> and yeah. then you can be around us with it. Well, hello and welcome to the Confused Breakfast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? Oh, I do. It's hard to beat the ease of the modern era in streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your couch. But there was something truly special about taking your periwinkle blue caravan to Blockbuster, picking out a movie by hand, and taking it home to watch. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. My name is Mike. My parents named me after St. Michael, the archangel, the spiritual warrior in the battle of good versus evil. It's very fitting. Wow. Yeah. We, yeah and then uh, joining me as always, I got Sean, who says that the spelling of his name is the correct way. We don't have the heart to tell him he's wrong. It's 100%. It's, yeah. And of course, AJ, most people think it stands for Anthony Joseph, but that's actually Albert Jebediah. Yep. Yeah, that's they're true. my partners, but it doesn't mean that we hold hands or take walks. How the heck are you, boys? Uh, well, I'd like to do that more. Yeah, really wish we would. I'm not saying it has to mean anything. I just <laughs> would like to do it more. Yeah. But uh, but no, I'm doing good, except for that whole debacle at Caravan I let you guys down on. So I'm sorry about that. It's okay. Kind of bullshit. You know, we need a mode of transportation to get from place to place, from studio to. Well, it took the je- jelly out of your donut. <laughs> <laughs> Hand cannon in your, in your waist? <laughs> Well, my dudes, on today's episode, we discuss the number 122nd rated movie on IMDb, the second movie ever directed by Guy Ritchie, a movie that made us all hate pikeys, love dags, and be wary of any man who keeps a pig farm. We're, of course, talking about 2000s <laughs> Snatch. Yeah. Well, damn dang it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another nostalgic journey to the past with the confused breakfast. Sit back. Relax and enjoy wherever you are in the world. Take it away, boys. Well, thanks for being here. If you're new to the podcast, we're going to be reviewing Snatch scene by scene with a modern eye. But we like to start first on nostalgia because this is kind of a nostalgic movie. We want to talk about the first time we saw it and what our feelings were back then. So we'll start with AJ on this one. Tell us first time you saw Snatch and what you thought about it. I know this is a broken record moment here, guys, but like I, I like it when we do these pockets of movies that I can kind of describe in the same manner. <laughs> it's like a, been a bunch in a row, actually. This is another one that my bro- I was just not <laughs> allowed to see, but my brother would come home from a friend's house and they're like, watch this movie Snatch. He's talking in a British accent. And he's like and he's like talking about you know he's 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 uh (laughs) talking about these scenes and describing them to me and about how they're going down and just like word for word so you're telling me that from about let's say 97 to 2003 yeah you sat just cross-legged kind of like the kid in pulp fiction like looking at him talking about the watch and just waited for your brother to come home on a Saturday Night Live so you can be like, AJ, dude, I saw the coolest. I... Sit down. I'm going to tell you all about it. And I can literally <laughs> tell you exactly when this era ended because uh, that will be a story for Titanic. Oh, all right. Yeah. Boner. Yeah. First so boner. I finally ended up, I, when I finally ended up getting to watch the movie itself after this and like I get those like little moments of my brother like repeating this back. 
it's just like it's somehow it's like nostalgia on top of nostalgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just such a good thing. And like, so I loved this movie. Like all of a sudden, I could just it's like I had an in. I had an in to understand what the mm -hmm. movie was like, which is a very nice thing to do in a movie like this. So, um, I will give this uh, nostalgically. I will give this an eight point eight. Eight point eight for age. Yeah. Sean, what about you, man? Wow. Kind of the same song and dance as AJ has been explaining the past couple weeks or so. So sorry. Um, for me, it's just kind of the same as well. Just uh, I, I need to see all these movies that these auteur directors mm -hmm. had made. And uh, actually, my I don't even know how to explain it, but my friend's or my dad's friend, uh, w while he lived in Illinois, would explain this movie kind of like your brother did, AJ. He's like, you got to see Lock, Stock, and Snatch. And I thought they were the same movie because <laughs> yeah, yeah. he would always say it like that. And so, uh, oh my God. Lock, Stock, and Snatch. <laughs> I would watch Snatch, and I like it was another one where I listened to the uh, soundtrack before I even saw cool. the movie. So I was like audibly informed of you know what was to come audibly in the movie. I Let's guess. be real. That is the porno name directed by Gay Richie. Lock, Stock, like, and Snatch. That, that, that lock, Stock, and Snatch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I fucking love this movie. Would quote it all the goddamn time. And it was around like when I started to get in the fight club as well. So, yeah, I'm about the same. I am a 9.3 on this. I mean, yeah, we've talked about this again. This is me in college as like a freshman in the dorms going, I'm I watch good films. I'm very smart. I'm you know, I love good films. Oh, that that's my um, Massive Attack oh, CD. Over oh, there. yeah. You like Massive Attack? I've always liked Massive Attack. <laughs> Turns out they're in this movie. That's yep. so cool. Yep. Hey, here's my Boondock Saints poster. Here's my <laughs> Snatch poster. Here's my Fight Club poster. I loved this. And this is when I first <laughs> came around on Brad Pitt to be like, I think I had maybe seen Fight Club first, obviously. And then I was like, that was the first time you came to <laughs> Brad Pitt. <laughs> I came Your Legends of the Fall <laughs> poster was on the back had, of the no, door. No, I went backwards to Legend of the Fall. Like I, I went, I skipped all those and then went back to it. That was a college breakup where I was like, I'm so yeah. sad. I'm like Tristan. <laughs> Brad Pitt saved me. <laughs> I'm a I'm a nine on this. Yeah. And we got Bud Larson as an executive producer today. He says, I want to say I was in college when I first saw this at a friend's house. He was a guy that bought the DVD before he'd even seen the movie. He had a massive DVD collection. I want to say around 2003 was the first time I saw it. I know it's not just me. I fucking love listening to English people talk. I agree with you, buddy. Mm -hmm. Soon after I watched this, I would get XM Radio and listen to nothing but BBC Radio 1. I got so many movie quotes from this movie. Nostalgic rating 9.5. Damn. Boys, that is a 9.15 for us nostalgically, which is going to slide that in to the fifth spot. That is going to be right above Dumb and Dumber and Surf Ninjas, right below Goonies and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's how wow. we feel about this movie. Okay. Let's that go. feels right. But I have a feeling this is all going to change when we talk about it with a modern day you rating. Think so? I think oh, so. Yeah. Okay. I got oh, yeah. a lot of a lot of bones to pick with this one. So first, we're going to learn Sean. We're going to learn the important details of the movie. What he got on this? Let's bro. learn about me. Produced by yeah. Matthew Vaughn. <laughs> it's been a long weekend. <laughs> uh, music by John Murphy. He also did Lock Stock. Uh, worked with uh, Ice Cube a bunch in Friday After Next, all about the Benjamins, and then worked with Daniel Boyle a bunch, 28 Days and 28 Weeks Later, and Sunshine, and then worked with Michael Mann, Miami Vice, and uh, he has recently done the Suicide Squad movie and Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Cinematography by Tim Maurice Jones. Also did a lot of Massive Attack videos, uh, shot Lockstock, and uh, most recently Expendables 4. It's good stuff. Right. Written and directed by Guy Ritchie. Cast, Jason Statham, Stephen Graham, Benicio Del Toro, Aid, Ad, Ade, yeah. William Beck, Ewan Bremer, Dennis Farina, Jason Fleming, Adam Fogarty, Alan Ford, Robbie G, Lenny James, Vinnie Jones, <laughs> Raid, Seb Zhezhezhe. You're the killing Russian. it. He's the Russian. You're, doing You're good, killing man. it. And Brad Pitt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> After the massive success of his previous film, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, Guy Ritchie was the hottest director in England. On such a low budget, Lock, Stock made almost $28 million. Jesus. And that gave producer Matthew Vaughn and Guy Ritchie carte blanche to pretty much do whatever they wanted to next. I think they made Lock Stock for like seven hundred thousand, something like that. That's wow. insane. Made a lot did, of money. Let me ask you: Did you guys see Snatch before you saw Lock Stock? Yes. I did. Okay, see, so yeah, I think that's how most people's journey goes. Yeah, probably. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, at the first uh, for Snatch, Richie heavily storyboarded storyboarded the film uh, so that he could really see the movie visually and help with his direction, a luxury he did not have for the first film. Richie has also said that the script for Snatch was basically stories left over from Lock Stock that did not make it in. 
At first, the film was pretty much ready to go with most of the actors from Lock Stock. That was until Brad Pitt called up Guy Ritchie personally, saying he was a fan <laughs> and asking if there was a part for him in his next project. Realizing what a get Pitt would be, uh, get Ri- Pitt. <laughs> Ritchie <laughs> lied and said, yes, of course. There is definitely a part for <laughs> Oh, right yeah. That's like <laughs> we got one roll left. We just haven't filled it yet. <laughs> yeah, hey, oh, if you shit. guys are ever out in L.A., you know, come on. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, we're, we're always there all the time. It's weird. Richie then rewrote the entire script to have the film be based around the character of Mickey, even though he was hesitant to play a fighter yet again, having just finished Fight That's Club. That's true. Benicio Del Toro was a bit, a bit difficult to work with, insisting that he play his character in a very particular way, not exactly the way Richie was imagining, uh, but it worked out. Sean Connery was initially interested in the role of Bricktop. Oh, my God. Producer what? Matthew Vaughn set up a private screening of Lockstock for Sean Connery, and during the film, Connery leaned over to Vaughn and said, this is a very good film. <laughs> you won't be able to afford me. Yeah. <laughs> and the pair finished the film. Uh, Stephen Graham came in with his friend to audition, and Richie basically just slapped the script in his hands and said audition. Graham, That's Tommy. Yeah. Uh, Graham is dyslexic, much like Richie is, and said he can't read the script verbatim, so he just improvised all That's his lines. That's so cool. Wow. Principal photography began October 18th, 1999. The set of Snatch was very jovial. Richie not only encouraged a fun energy, he made sure there was zero distractions in having fun during the making of the film. Um, make sure there's no distractions from having fun. Uh, the director had certain rules, such as the f- uh, f- a fine system, when someone's phone went off or when someone was getting frustrated. He would say, that's 10 quid. Like There would be like a pot of whatever of whatever money that people, uh, like, when they broke the rules or whatever. Nice. Filming concluded on December 12, 1999. Snatch was released in the U.K. on August 23rd and December 6, 2000 in the U.S., and on a budget of $10 million, the film made $83.6 million at the box office and has solidified itself as a classic of the British crime genre. Well, thanks, Sean. we got to go to AJ now. we got to learn about the ratings and reviews from critics and fans alike. What do you got, bro? <laughs> Ask me if I like dogs the right way. You, you like it. dogs? What? You like dogs? Dogs. You like dogs? Oh, dogs. Yeah, you yeah. You like dogs? I like dogs, but I like the tomato <laughs> meter better. Tomato. 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 It's a good way to like work in the quote that we obviously would have done later on. Just work it in now. Yeah, I just do it way. now and I like just that. you know that way I'll take the fun out of it for you guys later. I so. hope the listeners like. I hope they say something about dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, now they did it. I can, okay. I can shut they're, this off. They're now. waiting like this. <laughs> Say dags. <laughs> they did, they Say dags. Oh, oh dogs. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, guys, let's go for the tomato. 74%. 74 is kind of surprising to yeah. me. That is actually tied in the 80th spot of any movie we've done. That's tied with Big Trouble and Tombstone. Perfect movie. I mean, yeah. Okay. I, I mean, so I just, I still feel like the critics got kind of all those wrong. So yeah. that's fine. Uh, audiences were in a disagreement here. They're at 93%. There you go. It's pretty solid discrepancy yeah. there. Put them together and you got sense. the real. And yeah, you put them together and you've got pretty much IMDb <laughs> at 8.2. Okay. See, that's more like it. 8.2 is in the 10th spot of any movie we've done tied with Holy Grail, The Thing, and Die Hard. All right. Makes sense. There you go. Love that. Uh, let's run down some critics, guys. Like I say, they weren't necessarily thrilled about this. Uh, Sean Levy over at Portland, Oregonian. Oregonian? Oregonians. The convoluted story is an excuse for comical tricks uh, of the camera, fractures of chronic chronology, yep, uh, acid punchlines, and amusingly excessive performances. In this latter category, you got Pitt so deep into his character that you could smell him. It wins the day <laughs> gloriously. Uh, some bad. There was a bad. There's some bad ones too. Um, like like I say, they probably saw the hair and makeup and were like, I'm not going to like this movie. Uh, Stephanie Zacharek over at Salon said, it takes a, it takes a very clever schoolboy to make a movie as elaborately empty as Guy Ritchie's Snatch. Okay, schoolboy. enough. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is... This is... I think, I think most, most guys can relate, but I've never heard of a woman going and doing reviews. This might be the greatest idea for a movie review website that could exist. So ladies, hear me out. This is entitled, I don't know anything about this movie because I was asleep. (laughs) (laughs) 
My fiance <laughs> can relate. Uh, My so, wife can relate. So how was it? So review these. So you're saying like they have a review podcast maybe of just like the movies that they watched. Mm -hmm. Someone else was watching while they were passed out. And then they would wake up and be like, I am watching. Yep. I am paying attention. And they'd say, "What? Who's that?" Yep. And like, <laughs> and w wait. So how? What did you? What did you think of the movie? And then they take that person's review and then put it through their own filter, yeah. right? Oh, dogs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's dogs in it. <laughs> <clears throat> Jay Steers in 2001 said, "My guy friends loved this movie, but I was asleep within the first 15 minutes. <laughs> However, I didn't fall asleep because I was tired, but because I was bored." Yeah. Uh. So I don't know anything about it except that it was not worth it to pay six dollars for a nap. Mm, it's not I, worth even talking about at that point, <laughs> in my opinion. I don't believe that you can fall asleep because of boredom. Yeah, I don't think that's possible. You don't think that's a thing? You're just you have tired. to be tired. You're just tired. You have to be or exhausted. You have to be tired, drunk, or yeah. high. Yeah, that's not bored. It's important to note that 14 out of 59 people <laughs> did find that helpful. That is very important. So yeah, the, all of those other people also <laughs> fell asleep on the couch while they're boyfriend guy friend whoever <laughs> was was watching it uh this friend is named guy yeah guess. friend named guy uh <laughs> scarble says do not rent this movie mm. so one out of ten uh gross disgusting <laughs> seamlessly violent film masquerading as an art film and and the brits say that americans are violent no redeeming value. Throw it away if you bought it. Better yet, return it and demand double your money back. <sighs> <laughs> People who think this is a good movie are the reason there is so much acceptance of violence in America. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure all the violence is off screen. Like all the deaths. For the anyway. most part, yeah. yeah. You, I think you're right, actually. Um, did we get anything? I'm so sorry. Yeah, guys. we got I'm a gonna, little Lebowski. Urban I know we got some little Lebowski. I got it here if you want it. Can you? Get, would you mind? Yeah. So obviously, if you're if you want to support this podcast, go to Patreon.com/slash Confused Breakfast. One of the tiers mm, yes. we actually allow you allow you basically access onto the show. Like, here's the movie we're doing. You want to jump in? So we yeah. had uh, let's see, Jarrett Layoff jumped in on this one. The man. He said, "Stacked cast, incredible soundtrack." He thinks this is Brad Pitt's second best performance mm. behind. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. 12 Monkeys. <laughs> oh. So uh, close. It's very close. <laughs> <laughs> the introduction of Jason Statham for me and plenty of other actors like Vinnie Jones, Benicio Del Toro, and you can't forget Raid. Super drink as you got is Boris the Blade. Ah. Yep. Um, the side plot with the dum-dums trying to rob the betting joint. Good Lord, is that comedic gold. Yeah. yeah I true. agree with everything there, Jarrett. Yeah. Thanks, bro. Little Lebowski, Urban Achievers. Get on it, guys. Jump in there with us. I got one more for us here. Um, I, you know... It's somebody's favorite movie, right? It's a movie like this. Yeah, I guess it could be somebody's favorite movie. Hard to believe. Hard to believe. They said it's brilliant with five exclamation marks. Uh, out only in 2000 said, who on earth gave this a one rating? They're insane. This movie was funny, clever, magically shot, dark, sad. It was just excellent. Guy Ritchie is so original in how he tells his stories. What I really loved is that there is a climax literally all the way through the movie that will, with plenty of plots, uh, plenty of twists and turns. Even up until the last minute, there is something still up in the air for you to guess, and you will more than likely guess wrong. All the cast was great. There were so many characters that could have done so much, but it was just right. Brad Pitt, well, all I can say is that he's very underrated. In like 2000? Yeah, I, I guess he would have been. So. Yeah, I mean, right. Just, most people are just coming around to be like, "Hey, this Brad Pitt guy." Yeah. This is kind of why I wanted this review was yeah. because I wanted to bring some context to this. It's like Brad Pitt. Well, all I can say is that he's very underrated. Perhaps his looks are a curse, like me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like he the, he's just AJ, a curse. AJ wrote that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Please watch this movie. That's what it's like. Nice. <laughs> yeah. That's great. <laughs> Most of the time, it's like, do not watch do this not, movie. Do not. Whatever you do, watch this movie The first. only reason you're going to watch this movie because Brad Pitt's hot, and that's it. All right. Okay, I'm in. Sure. That's fine. Yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> well, boys, before we start and before we review Snatch with a scene-by-scene -scene breakdown, modern day, we got to do a history lesson. Okay. I want you to know that the biblical scholars mistranslated the Hebrew word for young woman into the Greek word for virgin, which was a pretty easy mistake to make, since there is only a subtle difference in the spelling. Mm. 
But back then, it was the virgin that caught people's attention. It's not every day a virgin conceives and bears a son. So you keep that for a couple hundred years, and the next thing you know, you have the Holy Catholic Church. And remember, this is a podcast episode, not a tickling competition. Let's do this. <laughs> Here we go. So scene one, after stealing an 86-carat diamond in a heist in Antwerp, Frankie Four Fingers goes to London to deliver the gemstone to diamond dealer Doug the Head. Meanwhile, unlicensed boxing promoter and casino owner Turkish convinces local gangster Bricktop to add his boxer, Gorgeous George, to the bets at his bookies. Turkish sends his partner Tommy and Gorgeous George to purchase a caravan from a group of pikies. George gets badly injured in an impromptu boxing match with Mickey O'Neill. Sean, this is how you do an intro, bro. Mm. What do I know about diamonds? Like, oh, no, but even even Statham like narrating this is just gold. It like, he's got is. a great voice for it, and I really think it's an underrated performance by him. Yep. To be honest, uh, yeah, I agree. I love well, I love this, and it's just so great because first of all, you get this little bit by Turkish, and you understand that he's just you already know the the script's going to be good. You're like, mm -hmm. oh, this script is incredible, and he's performing it perfectly. Then you get like. We always complain about the, oh, we got to show who the director is, and we got to show the actors. Yeah. And sometimes it's just the speed treatment of, like, here's elevators. Yeah. <laughs> Give us four minutes real quick. <sighs> but this, I love mm -hmm. when they do at least at least do something that I can watch mm -hmm. and do it creatively like this with the, with the camera angles, and the camera's going to different security monitors, and they're telling a story, but you're like, but what story are they telling? And, I, and I'm trying to watch where, where are they going. Like, you're so into it right away. Yeah. And then, oh, this is no big deal. Boom, it's a heist. And then now we got intro cards for every player in the movie. It's like, just, this is so it's good. It's really great. Yeah, and then, like, obviously, the they're doing, like, the literal he Hebrew translation yes. of the talk in Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you know? I didn't think about <laughs> like, that. About Madonna, which Guy Ritchie was about to like be married a, to. Like a virgin. Okay, yep. yeah. Okay. It's, like, it's brilliant, I think. <laughs> it's, like, it's, you know commenting on um, another crime movie that pretty much set the bar for crime movies and then having this movie pretty much set the bar for other crime movies yes. as well you know they're kind of they're kind of there's a lot of reviews in there thinking uh, oh guy Ritchie, oh, i guess we got another th england thinks uh. they got a tarantino on their hands and it's like no he's his own man yeah correct I mean, yeah, they this do have a Tarantino on their on their hands, but like, yeah, th the oh, guy Vit Richie version. Do you, you know? just like, mean a, another prolific <laughs> yeah, uh, director I mean. yeah. in in this world? Yes. Oh, oh you right. just mean a really good director that's going to make a ton of great movies? Yes. Yeah, cool, super super crazy. I really do like this, and I I never re uh, finally upon reviewing this now, I've really never paid attention to what they were saying in that, yeah, yeah. and that's mm -hmm. really what they were going through. And they're doing it so well, um, and then you you realize that these guys are all just robbers. Like they're just bank robbers. Or they're heist guys. They're fake. They're like, this is yeah. what a bunch of rabbis would talk yeah. about. <laughs> uh, hey, do you, do you think that they they plotted that ahead? So like, okay, so I'm going to talk about the Virgin Mary, but how it was probably like a mistranslation. Just, okay, just go with it. Okay, just with it, okay. <laughs> just, just just yes and me the whole I heard time. Okay? I heard this okay. on a podcast yeah, yeah. the other day. I heard yeah, yeah. It on a podcast. I'm just going to repeat what I heard. Uh, super interesting. And Joe Rogan was talking know. about this uh, <laughs> thing. It's, uh, it's <laughs> super interesting. <laughs> so, but I, I really do like how they're going through this. Uh, and uh, you can tell that there's a, a mistrust, like kind of from the get go oh, yeah. of this movie, though. And Benicio del Toro, I think, plays this Frankie Four Fingers <laughs> character. So, like, he didn't want Guy Ritchie didn't want him playing it this way. Or what it, was it? There's a little bit about it where it was just Benicio del Toro. It seemed like to me the way that I read it or like heard interviews was that he was just coming off Usual Suspects. He was pretty big. He was probably a little bit bigger than Brad Pitt at this Might moment. have been one of the bigger ones in the movie. Yeah, and okay. so he was just kind of like, I know, I read this character and he had it in his mind and he really wasn't going to be directed yeah. about it. You know, like, uh, okay. no matter what Guy Ritchie would tell him, which, you know, for better or worse, yeah. he's really great in it. <laughs> yeah, he, he is really great in it. I, I really like his character. I think having this soft-spoken character amongst all these other very feeling over the top kind of characters is kind of smart, honestly, um, kind of helps him fly under the radar. Benicio, but Benicio makes me feel weird every once in a while where you're like, you'll see a moment of brilliance and then you'll hear like an accent fade in and out a little bit. Like sure. Every once in yeah. a while in this movie, I'm just like, I don't like the way you're talking. Yeah. Like when he's like a couple of days, <laughs> you know, you're like, eh, you're trying too hard. Doug the head. 
Yeah, thug the head. Thug the head. <laughs> like sometimes that's that gets to me a little bit. Yeah. Because everybody else is so perfect in how they do it. So every once in a while, I think. How much do you want for it? How much do you want for it? Like, yeah, I do nothing. like his like, <laughs> and he's like those are the like, moments. Okay. <laughs> yeah. How much then what do you want then, for it? How much do you want for it? Then what do you want then for it? Then what do you want <laughs> for it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it's like Garth with like the gun. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I mean. Like he'll do things of pure brilliance like that. And then yeah. every once in a while you're kinda like, yeah, shit. I like how he's basically doing the same thing that he does to Tommy to Boris. <laughs> Boris the blade. Yeah. Boris the blade. Oh. Force the bullet dodger. The bullet dodger. That's dodger. For the reason they call him the bullet dodger. Nah, I think Why do they call him the bullet dodger? Because he dodges bullets. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's very it's very smart almost, but it's dumb at the same time. Yeah. It's funny, but it's 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 dumb funny. I don't know. And but this whole point, it's of, of him going through and him unloading the gun. And if you want a gun, go to Boris. Go see this guy. Yeah. You know, it, when you get to London. I don't know. There's it, it, you're 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 kind of locked in at this point. Right. I was locked in uh, yeah. even just on the like the character intros. Yeah, that, that so, stupid thing. Like I love that in the ending oh. of movies, like Days of Confused and stuff like yes, that. I always that's talk right. about that. But like in the beginning, is so cool. And to just you don't. See, and the like, first time you're watching this, you don't know who any of these people are. You're I think like, it's totally necessary too, <laughs> yes. because there's so many characters and they're so all like very three dimensional. Every single one of them. And these they, these freeze frame shots. You're right. <laughs> it's it's my favorite guy Richieism. Uh, you know that thing that he does. What are your What are your favorite freeze frames, though? I have specific ones of, okay. of all the character introductions. Actually, my one of my favorite ones is Saul. <laughs> okay, that's um, a good one. I but, but Tommy is the <laughs> best. <laughs> no, it's Gorgeous George and Tommy because Gorgeous <laughs> yeah. George punches and turns, and then Tommy t- hits the bag and goes. And he's just and like he's like. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the my worst favorite. freeze frames. It's like it's like what happened in the election or yes, something. Exactly. Uh, but <laughs> I like Saul. His is super cool. Like yeah. when he's like throwing the money, and I like how that transitions to Mickey, mm-hmm. right? And I, because I, I, I think that that's really smart. How a lot of these like will transition. But I also like Turkish, and he's like handing the money yeah. back to the sausage guy. I, I like uh-huh. Lenny. Lenny, right? Lenny. Uh, yeah. Uh, Saul's partner. Yeah. He just has the jewels. I just I like Vinny. his face. Vinny. 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 Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, Vincent? I just like his face Vincent. in it. I don't know why he's just looking straight down the barrel of the camera. Mm-hmm. So, so I do want to ask you this, Sean. Um, like this is very. In fact, I had to, I, I was thinking about Ocean's Eleven a lot in, during this movie, sure. especially like these intros. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, when is that? This is before Ocean's Eleven, so you've got to assume this did inspire a lot of just the the music and the quick cuts and sure. here's this. But how do you feel? This is very two thousands for me. These like quick cuts and like the gun spin. You know, like he he spins the gun and it rotates around and then it shows up in another guy with a gun. Like, I think back when I first saw this, I was like, yeah, this is so innovative and cool. It slightly feels a little bit dated to me now. Some of these kind of cuts. How do you feel about those? I could see that. And maybe there's a little bit of that while watching it uh, these days. But I really do think that, you know. This movie, this movie, like the film itself, is a character, and I I like the way that Guy yeah. Ritchie explains it. Where like even like the speed ramping that later on with the fights and everything, and like these quick character introductions, like the the film itself is a character. And he, he I think he took like a lot of the freeze framing from uh, Sam Peckinpah, like the Wild Bunch, the intro to the Wild Bunch. Um, and I really agree with that. I really think that you know, this movie would probably be great with all without all the flash, but I think it's different and iconic because of all is the it flash. because so many people have tried to do this after the fact that I, that's why i'm like ah shit everybody does that but yeah, actually but this still, was, it's, it's it would still affect the way you see it I but understand it's so that. if i if i'm if i'm nitpicking it, yeah it's very nitpicky because it's it works so well yeah it's like the things we'll get into it later with the fighting like with the new roadhouse how they're like look it's so cool we're gonna do this new technology thing to make it look like yeah. this they didn't get it. Mm. Where this this movie, whatever they were trying to do, they got it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like cool. I'm, yeah. I'm into it. Yeah, you nailed I mean, it. I, re- I really think that it's like, you know, th- and it doesn't do it too much. Is what I like about it. Like even when it when it needs to like kind of slow down and, yeah. and just be the movie or just like be a locked off shot, it will do that. But then like transitioning into the next character is I don't know. I think it really deserves it and warrants it in my opinion. I think it also it also kind of gives. Uh, a little bit of life to the diamond itself to uh-huh. be its own character. Mm-hmm. Um, that MacGuffin that we always, you know, that you that you need in a movie like this that has to tie all these things together. 
And I think that's what it brings life to that. Yeah. And it, it brings a lot of attention to it to make sure like this is why this is all happening. And this is why these stories are connecting and why these characters are connecting who have we have to assume a lot of them, some of them have met, but a lot of them have never met mm-hmm. in yeah. life. Right. And that's why it's all coming together. Back to Frankie real quick. Uh, th- this again, wh- why w- I love doing this podcast and thinking about things more critically than just watching a movie. This scene where he is uh, talking on the phone, yeah, and and every time it cuts back to him when he's talking to Avi, he's got a different suit on. <laughs> I've never noticed, I know. dude. <laughs> and but then think about the, the, what I really thought about was that like they didn't have to do this, yeah, because this is 40, 40 seconds of the movie from when he calls Avi to when this conversation ends. It's 40 seconds long. And they could have just filmed him and Avi and been done with the scene. But instead, think of how long it took them to film this, to where he had to change suits four different times. Yeah. And then they also had to make a Vegas montage. Yeah. They had to, they had to make <laughs> a Viva five... Las Vegas! <laughs> so just funny. like in like snippets. Like, they, they, this like would have taken, <laughs> yeah. this would have taken like an hour to film. Instead, yeah. this probably took like a full day to film. <laughs> and, and that's why I'm just like, thank you. Thank you for making that choice because it's so subtle. They don't even play on it. No. If you don't think about it, you're never going to notice that he's in four different suits it's here. Another, it's another reason why I like the movie a lot because it's just, it is in on itself too and it's its own thing. Like, like uh, reading that the making of it was really fun makes me really happy. But then like, you know, you could see that in the filmmaking. He's like, we have a budget now. Like, let's just go for it. Yeah. Like, if he's getting, like, let's make this uh, scene interesting. Let's have him change every single time that he, that he says a line. <laughs> right. I don't care. Like, it doesn't make any sense, but it's funny. Like, I, I don't care. I I, I love, um, I, 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 if, we're, if we're there, I love Cousin Avi. What's his, what's the, uh, Dennis Farina? Dennis Farina, yeah. Yeah. He might be <laughs> somehow one of my top, like, favorite characters in this. I, I, I have a Sit very down, hard time. You fat bald fuck. <laughs> I have a Who very the fuck <laughs> wants to see him. I, I have a hard time picking a favorite character in this movie. I know, so but it depends on my mood. But a lot of times it ends up being obvious. It's so funny, dude. He's just like, oh yeah. It's like I don't like. I don't like. Dog, I'm my coming country, to London. Yeah. <laughs> London. <laughs> he, ta- he, ta- he, ta- he takes the. Was that the Concord or it's, whatever? Yeah, it's like a taxi. Then it's uh, him taking a pill, drinking water, yeah. and then the Concord. <laughs> yeah, and th- that was a th- th- that doesn't happen anymore, does it? Like those uh, those the jets, Concords are not they don't ex- yeah. exist anymore. It was like it was like a super fast jet or something. It went like 700, 800 miles per hour, and it got like it, it did from basically like New York, New to, York to, London. to London or whatever in like four and a half hours. Yeah, or something. some sort of crazy speed, and like he's he, <laughs> which that was the thing I had to. The reason I bring that up. Is because it's basically same day when he shows up. Oh yeah, we have to assume it's same day. It looks day, like he just put day. the phone down. Yeah, it was like eight a.m. in in New York or something, and he gets there. And I don't know. It's very very funny to it's me. It's economical filmmaking too. Like I talk about, it's just like yeah. we, we need to get Abby to London. Let's do it within three seconds and we're, make it funny. And we're, but we're gonna spend forty five seconds of Benicio del Toro in different suits. <laughs> yeah. That's where we're gonna make up for this. You know, it's it's so it's so great. It's like I don't like leaving my country, Doug. He's like I especially don't like leaving it for anything other than sandy beaches and little little drinks with little straw hats on them, <laughs> which is a weird statement to make. A straw hats. Yeah, umbrellas. Umbrellas when you obviously go. Well, who the fuck wants to see him? We got Sandy <laughs> Beach. We're going, we're going to London. 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 Yeah, London. You hear that, London? Doug? Yeah, London. Fucking Mary fucking Poppins, <laughs> London. Mary Poppins, bad food, worse weather, man. <laughs> fucking London. God damn. He's so, okay, fine. You're selling me. We'll decide who the best character is by the end of this, but you're already selling me on Avi. I, th- I just think that no one else could have played that character the way that he did it. You know, yeah. it's impossible to think of somebody else. No, I, I, I agree, Can man. Can we talk about Bricktop a little bit? Or yeah, sure. Wait? Yeah, yeah. Um, this guy, man, I think he's one of the most terrifying. <laughs> Like, you know, mobsters, like head guys, you know, maybe uh, Joe Pesci and uh, specifically the Irishman, AJ. Like, I know you yes. might agree with me, but um, just like very ruthless and very like cunning and smart and witty and funny, you know. And so I don't like I get it's so much mixed emotions about him, but he's ultimately very terrifying. Take your opinion. tongue out of my ass, though, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a that dogs do that. You're not, You're a, not dog, a dog, are you? Yeah. You're not a dog, are you? Uh, no, no, bricks off. I'm not. <laughs> Governor, <laughs> Governor. Yeah, it's you're a ruthless little cunt. He's like, I don't have time for grouses, and it's <sighs> this is those moments 
when you have a character like this that you get to see just how terrifying they really are. Yeah. Well, and he doesn't even like how does how do the guys know to do this? So was so it's like so ruthless that hey, listen, no matter what happens, mm -hmm. the minute I turn my back on him, go ahead and kill him. I don't yeah. care. I don't care what I say or what we say because there's no like you're gonna uh, hey kill him. You know, like they just do it. There's no they had nod. To choreograph yeah. <laughs> all these disposals. Before they got there, Bricktop's like, okay, I want to make this look really good, guys. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm going to, when when I say this and when I turn to my right and start walking towards the boxing ring, yeah. I want you to pull the paper bag over and then you duct tape. What if we do oh, a plastic bag? Instead? Oh, okay. Mm. No, actually, you're better with duct tape, aren't you? You're, yeah, you're, I'm pretty good duct with tape it. Guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I have problems like ripping the end off. So yeah, once you once weird. you do the duct tape. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you want to do a practice run? Sure, Let's sure, sure. Okay, cool. Hey, boxers, come over here yeah. real quick. <laughs> that's what? why they're staring at him because it's like that's what they were practicing for. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> what does he yell at the boxers to? He's like, it just it's like, what are you guys looking at? It's, it's like, <laughs> what the fuck are you looking at? Yeah. <laughs> he's and he's so. I think part of the reason he's so scary is just how fucking gross he is too. Yeah. Like the way he talks with his teeth out. Like, well, he was he was in Lockstock and oh, uh, what was he in Lockstock? He was like kind of the narrator in that. If I oh, remember correctly, shit. yeah. And Alan Ford. Yeah, he had to audition for this like several times apparently. Like I don't know if Guy Ritchie just. Wanted somebody else who had somebody else in mind, apparently Sean Connery, but um, he came in and uh, forgot his contacts when he came in to read. And so he had those no glasses way. on. And, like, uh. He has a very, very healthy prescription. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he came in and he's just like, oh, yeah, that's Bricktop. Like, yeah. And then he described his teeth was like, they're just like, you know, so prominent. He's such a character on, on film. I feel like that's those are the defining somehow even more than his glasses the defining characteristic characteristics of bricktop are his teeth and his hair yeah that that strange like haircut that he's got quaffed back <laughs> looks like like hamburger patty on his head kind of a thing that you're just like dude that is that is bricktop like a flat topped hair guy and his intro with the hammer too mm -hmm. it, again it's giving great insight to just Wait till these characters show up. Yeah. And then we see it really the first time for his introduction, and he basically has two two guys murked. Yeah. You know? So it's it's pretty brutal stuff. Even when he takes a drink of tea, it's very <laughs> like he's like You talk about like it like he swishes tea around in his fucking mouth like a maniac. He, it's like he's chewing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like he's chewing the tea, the drink. Uh, by the way, well, we'll get there at that scene, but yeah. So we got to we got to get to the Pikey camp for the first time here. And I one of the things I noticed is that it almost appears like gorgeous George knows that things are about to change when they're Ooh, driving yeah. into this Pikey oh. camp. He says something like, what are we doing here? And we're buying a caravan off a pack of fucking Pikes. Pikes. What's wrong with you? And he even says, this will get messy. This is going to get messy. And he says, not if you're here. He goes, oh, you bastard. You bastard. Like, <laughs> he knows that something's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. And it does. And in fact, I will tell you, I'm going to I'm gonna cliffhang the audience a little bit here. I have a theory that if they don't go buy this caravan, the I, so many things are different. Mm. And, I, and I spelled them out. And it's insane that if they just decide not to go buy mm. this caravan and George knows it. And it's just so wild why this scene sets up so perfectly with that. And it's so subtle. Yeah. Like, oh, you bastard. Can we? Uh, I, I know I want to talk about this. I just have one quick question. Where are Turkish and Tommy and Gorgeous? Where are their parents? Where are they? Well, yes. <laughs> because they look like they're in a van down by the river style. Like, uh, like where are they? Where's this it's like caravan a at? Warehouse. It's, it's like a it warehouse with like a, a caravan inside or, of it. <laughs> under an overpass or something. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I just can't figure it out. It just, it was something so strange to me every single time. And I'm looking around when we're watching the movie, when I'm watching the movie, I'm like, where are they? And it's like, what's going on with those sausages? And it's like, two minutes, Turkish. I say that all the damn time. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, and, and then he, but I just want to know where the fuck they're I, at. I don't think you're supposed to like charcoal grill stuff inside no. without good ventilation. You're Very not true. To have That's like, like pretty healthy fire. flame too. So five minutes, and like he's got his like little casino slot machine yeah. place. Like why don't they just run it out of the back of have like, a his nice office. office there? Yeah, exactly. But this is where the boxing gym. I think this is where George was training. So this is maybe their gym. Uh, yeah. Okay. See, like. It's like it's just a property. It's like a decrepit mm -hmm. property that they have. And he's got a caravan. Well, what's wrong with this one? Oh, nothing. Tell me. <laughs> it's, it's tip, tip top. top. <laughs> 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 
It, it, Jason Statham's voice in this whole thing. Yeah, I know. It never changes. Like, his inflection is just always, like, right there. Yeah. Turns out that the pikey was a bare-knuckle boxing gypsy <laughs> champion, which makes him harder than a coffin nail. We we just... Let's just... I know we're going to talk about him the whole time anyway, but, but Brad Pitt's first introduction here. Yeah. Like, I still laugh so hard, especially the scene, like, when he slaps the back of that kid's head. The kid's, like, yeah. looking, what you doing here, mister? And he, he just walks up and he goes, bam! Just hits the kid in the it's back a fast of the car, head. mister. <laughs> oh, it's nice to see your bike. <laughs> he's like, when he, Are we going to go fetch him? <laughs> Brad Pitt comes up out of that. He's taking a shit behind the car. <laughs> Did you realize yes. that? Yeah. <laughs> he, just like he talks about taking shites a lot in this movie. <laughs> But like his his hey, accent, fucker, aren't you? his accent's unbelievable. And in fact, back in the day, I do remember the VHS and DVDs did not have subtitles for him. Mm-hmm. It was all just like I don't know. We so don't you know. really had to like I think he like we would rewind it a bunch, but like I think he said that. I or think there's a version on the DVD where you can just have subtitles just for him. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. And what they wow. think he's saying. And Maybe like, that was a reissue or something. There's wasn't some it? things that he's saying. Yeah, I think it's probably yeah. like a special edition. But uh, there's some things he's saying, like especially when he's describing the. The caravan uh, is like, how do we go blue? You know, and how fast is that for And it's like, and it's like, and it's like, it's just a question mark. <laughs> like, the like heads, there's no we idea. actually don't know. <laughs> yeah. But but now if you watch it on like, it's on Amazon Prime. If yeah. you watch it, it's it's yeah. actually there for the most. But there's a couple times they're like, I don't it, know. there's <laughs> that one specifically was like inaudible or like, yeah, I, I just didn't know what the hell. I watched it. I, I, I flipped around my my watching schedule on it. I watched it with subtitles the first like three times, <laughs> yeah. and then I and then finally I watched it without subtitles so I could just get the full effect right. But I had to because you want to know what he's saying. Oh, have to be raw. Like it's it's great, man. And his performance in doing ah, oh, you're a boxer, are you? Huh? Oh, yeah. look well, at the big fella. Come on, take it for the big fella. Well, Mom, it, I'm gonna take a look at this guy. Well, and like and that's what's so great is they all seem so nice this first time you meet them. But there's that moment where like. They kind of like come at him for a second, and they all they all stand up really yeah. quick, ready to fight. And you're like, "Oh shit, okay," because they they just seem like, "Oh, they're just like little gypsy guys." They're they're pretty nope. They're dangerous. They're very and, dangerous. And yeah. George was very right about this. Yeah. And this man, if you're not into this movie yet, if you watched all that we've talked about and you're still like, "Yeah, this movie doesn't do it for me," this first time he knocks George out. It's so fucking This is awesome. the scene like, that Bob would one. describe to me. This is the one that he described to me all the time. Like he would, you'd be like, and he's just, he's just talking about Brad Pitt, and he gets decked, and he's like, oh, and then he cracks his knees, and where he's, and he holds he's, his knee up, yeah. and they, and they, they push the box up, and he goes, okay, here we go. You want to stay down? <laughs> he's like, you're not going anywhere, you fat fucker. And he yeah, comes he, back at him. It finished until the job is done, and he just and he kisses his, his neck. The sidestep. Bam. It's fucking dope. And <laughs> he so he looks just like a lean brawler mm-hmm. badass in this movie. Like the way he's just standing shoulders back, you're like, yeah, I would never, I would never step no. into this camp ever. Just knowing a, a person like that is there. <laughs> and then like, we can talk about the soundtrack a little later. We need yeah, to get to. But you got to mention scene. this. Golden Brown by uh, the Stranglers is just it's the first time I ever heard the song. Yeah. Uh, it like introduced me to like p- punk rock. Of like the British variety, yep. you know, I, I fucking love this song so much, and it's so perfect because like this is also where your Jason Statham's takes over, yes. and like Tommy's crying, he's like he doesn't know what's about to happen to him, like they might kill him. He yeah. knows that if Gorgeous George does not get up, he's dead, yeah. and they're they're going to be burying two bodies. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it looks like he's almost crying. He's got, he's got Tommy's like, got a tear in his eye. Man. Yeah, there's like tears hitting, and every he's he's like. So why would they want to? Why would they go about explaining one body when they could just bury two and move <laughs> camp? <laughs> Fuck, just like, that's terrifying. Like that just became a very Tommy, scary realization. Yeah. Tommy's protection is now now got him killed. And, like basically, and it's it looks like it's the Pikes fighting about eat this to each other. Yeah, right. Like <laughs> yeah. basically, well, what he's, to he's do? Alone at this point. Yeah, yeah he's alone, <laughs> and they're fighting about what to do with this because well, what are we going to do now? We because should kill him. We, we might as well just kill them both. No, Look, we're not going to kill them both. Let's kill this guy. He's like, Coach George better be waking up. <laughs> <laughs> Makes him hotter than a coffin nail. <laughs> I just love Jason Statham so much. And before we move on, can we? There's there's something about um, the performance of Jason Fleming, basically saying zero words 
com- and and complimenting yeah. Brad Pitt's performance. He's the number two, right? Like yeah. where, where you automatically assume this. With the mullet. He, yes. He he has like three words, actual words. I don't know, even know. Does he say something? It's one point where he's it's when he comes at back out later on in the movie. Okay. Darren, Darren, back yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck off, Darren. Yeah. There he has like some lines. <laughs> but but even when they're like debating and he's just like leans over behind him and like Yeah. Or like when he's hooking up the trailer too, he's like, "Yeah, <laughs> I love it." You know, the, his performance is the compliment, complimentary like perfection to Brad Pitt. Yeah, it's it's amazing. And man. he was basically a lead in Lock Stock, like one of the leads. I mean, like, yeah, he was kind of set aside because Brad Pitt came in you, to do this. So he may have been could, the he guy. Could, he he could might have been, been the main. Wow. Who Maybe. knows? We do, we do. Before we move on, let's consult the Jarrett Lay Off Me, I'm Starving, Confused Breakfast <laughs> Actor Database. Yes. <laughs> they want a soundbite, so we have to make one at some point. I like that. Consult, let's consult the Jarrett Lay Off Me, I'm Starving. Lay Off. <laughs> <laughs> lay Off Me, I'm Starving. <laughs> Confused Breakfast Actor Database. That starts All right, Monday. we got to make that. There's not much to report on, not much to report on this one. <laughs> Only four actors making their second appearance, but the one we can definitely talk about being Jason Fleming, because yes. this is two in a row. He was Bobby Beers in Rockstar last That's week. That's right. So look yeah, at that. Man. Two in a row for the boy. Love it. I think he'll Farina be next in week in uh, Biodome. Jason Fleming? No. No. Okay. No. We're going for three in a row. <laughs> <laughs> was uh, Dennis Farina in the yeah, thing you know, we did? We're going to have to pull it up here real quick. Let's just look at the old Snatchersons. Snatchersons? What you do is you type in Snatch into the database. Okay. And so it's Dennis Farina. He was in Saving Private Ryan. That's right. Yes. Uh, James Cunningham was in Mrs. Doubtfire and Brad Pitt, True Romance. Yeah, dude. Kind of. Go. Yeah. Kind of. You know what I mean. All right. Well, let us move on to scene two. I had forgot you how to speak there. <laughs> With George injured, Turkus recruits <laughs> Mickey to replace him in his upcoming match by agreeing to purchase a new caravan for Mickey's mother. Bricktop agrees to the change on condition that Mickey throws the fight in the fourth round. Boris gives Frankie a gun in exchange for placing a bet for him. Abby learns of this and knowing that Frankie has a gambling problem, flies to London with his bodyguard, Rosebud. Was this the first time you ever saw Jason Statham in anything? Mm. Transporter was for me. Yeah, because you guys that. didn't see this till maybe mid two thousands, late two thousands, yeah. yeah, something like something that. Like okay, that. when I saw this in two thousand or whatever, this was one hundred percent the first time I had ever seen him, and I had the same feeling about him that I had about um, Vin Diesel when I saw Pitch Black. Mm, yeah, <gasps> yeah, Be- being wow. like, oh my god, this guy's gonna be a star, and of course he he completely goes on to. Jason Statham is a household name. Dude, the Meg, the Meg 2. I'm just oh, saying. And, yeah, I dude. mean, this is his best movie. Cranked? He's ever been in, but, but, he mean. Was, <laughs> but he was, it, Lockstock was his Crank first movie two, he was yeah. ever in. Yeah. And so it is kind of interesting to see how perfect he is in this movie, yeah. having not really been much of an actor yeah, going into it, this. Yeah, him and Guy were uh, really good friends, and they still are, apparently. There's a really cool interview with Guy Ritchie uh, doing like kind of a retrospective of this movie. He had hit... In this interview, he had watched the movie for the first time in like 15 years, uh, right before the interview, wow. and he's just talking. And he like calls up uh, Jason Statham. He's like, "Dude, you're fucking awesome <laughs> in this movie. Like, you need to go back and watch it." And Jason Statham's like, "I haven't watched it in 20 years." Uh, <laughs> you know, well, what's like the that. matter? You go uh, watch it. Bro. I haven't watched that in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna start now. I'm on set of your movie. What's going on with those sausages? He's sitting in the background. <laughs> you got a sausage guy he's, still? He's still got that guy. He's hanging out. <laughs> he's <laughs> I don't do a movie without my sausage guy. He's like, okay. <laughs> he's got a sausage guy <laughs> on the set of on the set of transporter. Oh yes. Well, and then now you're gonna get uh, Boris. Boris is intro. Boris the blade. Boris the blade. As crooked as the sickle on the floor. Boris the sneaky fucking Russian. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about his performance then? I love him. I, anytime he's in a movie, I love it. Um, yeah, I, I love the aspect of like Rasputin-ish kind of lore with him where he just cannot be killed, you know? <laughs> That's really fucking funny. Well, and it's kind of a legend. You don't know this, but right. then you get to see it as the movie <laughs> yeah. goes on. It You're pays like, oh, off. Shit, it, like, it sets it up and pays it off. This is a guy that... This is a guy that um, it's it's like he he speaks he speaks with his beard. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like like he, he, it's like that is his mouth. He doesn't have <laughs> lips. He just has beard and mustache. Kind of like me. Yeah. Like <laughs> there, there's something about it. he's just like I need to I want you to place a bet for me. You know, he's just got this thing about his fucking lips, he- man. Heavy's good. He's like uh, heavy's good. If you run out of bullets, you can good. throw it at him. Yeah. He's like if can, it doesn't you work, can, you can always hit him with it. Hit him with it. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's my favorite freeze frame, actually. <laughs> yeah. Hit him with it. Hit him with it. <laughs> Boss the blade. I do want to go ahead and hit Bullet this one. one. Hit it! If we oh were boy. on a train huh? to yes. go punch a face, yeah. I'm on board. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. This is a tough one uh, as far as punchable faces go. There was a few. There was the guy. You know the two guys that are always mad at the fight because the because yeah the fighter the guy with the weird eyes yep. like yes. he's he was a candidate. But for me, for me, it's this weirdo from the uh, from the robbery heist. The one that's like, Boris, I'm telling you, I've seen it with my own eyes. It's oh, 86. Yeah. Like, maybe it's that he's staring right in the camera. Oh, it's his brother or whatever. Yeah, I tell you. Like, it, it <laughs> seems like a completely, like, one of the worst Russian accents I've ever heard. But then yeah. I looked him up. Apparently, he's yeah. like, he's like Bosnian or something. Oh, so, so I'm so like, it's at least, like, you should have maybe done better <laughs> at this. I, I don't know if that guy is still an actor or not. But for some reason, the way he's like looking at the camera and overexcited about the conversation, I'm I'm punching that guy. Yeah. I I agree with you. I didn't really like that was the only performance in this. I don't right? I don't like, and it's just like the locked off kind of zoom in pull in camera of that guy in a room talking. You know, I don't know. It, it just it, felt weird. It was it. Everyone else is so outlandish, and he was just like I don't know. It he didn't need to be outlandish, I guess. But. Yeah, I, I I agree with you guys. I I I will take that <laughs> punch just because. Okay. And in that in that same moment, actually, go ahead and hit prop. Oh shit! Sure. Yeah. Ooh, do. here's a prop. I mean, obviously, some there's the diamond is the most obvious one, but Boris is actually pouring like making coffee or whatever into a mug, and I want his coffee mug. It says like it says something like Mother Russia, like oh, whatever. Really? Like I just like for some reason I want this like <laughs> ridiculous mug. That'd be a good one. <laughs> I was always thinking um, that at some point in my life I probably could have been a like a fedora type of a guy. I never was. Yeah. <laughs> but like it might be time to p- pull out a fedora, but make it the brown leather hat that Mickey wears. Why don't you oh, just try yeah. it? Do you think I should? You should just try it and you, see how it does for you. Well, I you think know the rule. Especially with your long hair, I think it would actually. You think so? It. Like get a brown one specifically. Okay. Like like he has. I just don't think fedoras. Um, I think there's some rules on fedoras that we should talk about. One, only one fedora per crew. Yeah. Okay, like you yeah. cannot have multiple people wearing fedoras at the no. same time in the same crew. No, you can't rat pack it. No, you, know, no, you no, gotta no. you gotta have one guy well, who's you, the fedora guy. You can't wear just like a graphic tee with a Ooh. fedora. It has to be like you have to be wearing yeah. like a jacket with it, like a cool leather jacket or like, you know, whatever underneath. But you need are a you jacket. A, with are it. you allowed to like go sideways with it kind of like a sideways tilt or does it have to go straight on or even, can it can it kind of be off the backside? You're you're headed into punching territory. Uh, like people yeah. are going to get mad at you for that. OK, so, so how do I just wear it? Just like a normal hat? Just like a normal fedora. But what hat. about slightly, slightly off the back kind of like? I don't know why you're doing this because <laughs> like now, now you're getting into like more of like bar mitzvah. Yeah. Kind of stuff. Uh, you got to be careful because you're, 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 you're one step away from professional ska band skanker. And then you're one step away from, you know, in his parents' basement. Really need you to be able to still handle wears it. this, you know? Like, we need you to know the rules, <laughs> and yeah. then you can be around us with it. We'll right, get really you some inspiration. We'll send you some pictures of Brad Pitt and Snatch, cool. Uncle Buck, you cool. know, John yeah, Candy. Yeah, okay, cool. We'll get you some inspo, yeah. We'll, we'll be that back next week uh, to let you know how this goes out. Yeah. And, and this is my new segment. In every episode, there needs to be about a minute of like we're, we should record our conversations type yeah yes. so that that was your it's called Mike's let's let's start a podcast let's, minute minute <laughs> we tried it last week with the guitar yeah. carrying the guitar through the airport it went really well yeah oh yeah people so, love it cool. don't you have a don't you have a cool hat you've got a big wide brimmed hat you yeah, can do I you, should actually I should start wearing you that you need to start wearing that okay in your, your house pops. I want <laughs> oh we're still in props yeah. oh shoot yeah, yeah. <laughs> man I thought I had something written down uh. I don't know. Uh, no. Oh, great. We got really? to talk about fedoras. Oh. He had so much time. <laughs> <to play>. um, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I'm going uh, Bullet, Bullet Tooth Tony's uh, Desert Eagle, I guess. Uh, I, I thought you were going to take his teeth. Point five <laughs> oh. Point five oh. Point five oh. Replica. Uh, so what do you think about the... The one thing I did not actually realize the, the 20-something times I've watched this is that every character has a theme song. Yeah. Did you notice that? Yeah. This was the first time that actually came around to me where there's just a subtle motif that plays when each of these characters come on screen. Really? Yeah, even the Boris is... Oh, yes, okay. And then I think I think um, Turkish's is the flute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, it's just the, freaking, the, it's so that's freaking... That's not it, but yeah. I no, it. I yes, yes flute. 
Oh, yes, flute. Yes. When you hear flutes yeah. like recording, you have to hear the. <laughs> It's, it's like Jethro Tull's in the background or something. <laughs> uh, no, that's actually, that's interesting. I, I never, I don't know why I never pieced that together. If pay it because it's so subtle, just because the music's so good in this yeah. that it just always works. It never, it never comes out of left field. But when you do these things correctly, kind of like uh, Star Wars will do, you know, when certain characters come on screen, it mm-hmm. just, the music just sort of molds into that for a second and comes away. This movie does a perfect uh, job of that. Yeah. Yeah. Saul and uh, Vinny, right? Vinny? Yeah. yeah. Uh, they all get like Dreadlock Holiday yes. and uh, the special song, Ghost Town. <laughs> Ghost, Ghost Town. Town. Yeah. I, God, this soundtrack is so it good. It is. We need to talk about it. But yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's really cool. And then uh, Mickey gets like, the kind of hits like the massive attack thing like he gets he gets like he gets the plot points yes for for the needle drops I think. yes uh, okay like i uh i i do want to talk um are we are we in a point to talk about more like saul and Vinny and all that yet uh, or you think we that's can move on to the next scene if you're fine we actually covered a lot of this scene earlier talking yeah. about avi and and Frankie getting the gun and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to move on if you guys Let's are. Let's do it. Sure. So, scene three, Boris hides Vinny and Saul to rob Frankie off the diamond while he's at the bookies. The robbery goes badly, but they manage to kidnap Frankie. Mickey doesn't throw the match, which infuriates Bricktop. He robs Turkish and demands that Mickey fight again. Meanwhile, Boris retrieves the diamond and executes Frankie. I love... I, oh. oh. Excuse me. Uh-huh. <laughs> I love uh, buttons. I love this crew of the of Vinny and Dude. Saul and what's the other guy? Uh, Tyrone. Tyrone. Duh. It's they are so fucking funny together. I, they might be like my favorite group. This of this are you whole doing movie. Tyrone. This whole like that might be the most quoted thing for me is anytime we're talking about Tyrone is like. You can land a jumbo fucking jet in that. Yeah. He goes, Tyrone, when you reverse, things come from behind you. Come from behind you. It was too too tight. Too <laughs> tight. It's too tight. They're just, they're so goddamn good. And like, it's t- it made me think about it this time around, Sean. It was at a funny angle. It was a funny <laughs> angle. <laughs> took a rally, he took a rally car course, didn't you, Tyrone? Of course, course I did. Of course I did. Course You're I professional, did. ain't you, Tyrone? Of course I, think, I am. I think Tyrone's my lovable face in this movie. I he would, might yeah. be, yeah. Because if you actually think about it, Tyrone's, he's right in this entire thing. Like, they pick on him, but he's the only reason these guys don't fuck up even worse. Yeah. Um, Tyrone, he goes, what's in the briefcase? And they're like, well, who cares what's in the briefcase? Yeah. We're getting money. You want to know what's in the briefcase, bro. Tyrone was completely what? right. Why are you asking so many questions? <laughs> right. Like, he's just, it's like... <laughs> They no, are taking no, you should this. A- you should ask what's in the briefcase. Then he's the one that saves them and gets them out of the security door. Yep. And also, he's the only one that notices Frankie get out of the van. Yeah. The, it's a man holding a briefcase with four fingers. With four, four fingers. fingers. <laughs> like, what are you doing with them, Tyra? Who is this? It's like a man holding a briefcase with four fingers. Well, he's got a tea cozy on his head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, dude. That's I, your prop, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah there it is. The tea cozy on Frankie's head. Um, the, the point where, like, uh, T- Tyrone's fast, like, Ty- like he's just w- whatever rally car driver or some shit. He's like, I ain't, ain't you're professional, ain't you, Tyrone? Of course I am. He's getting out to fill guys. Like, <laughs> the sound of the leather jacket, <laughs> yeah, is it goes, so it's fucking too long, good. Too. He, like keeps going. Cutting back to Vinny, dude. It's what so good. What the fuck's he gonna get away from? <laughs> <laughs> it's it, like it's uh, it's so fun to watch them going. I guess like a lot of their all their mishaps and stuff that they get into. They seem so smart, but they're so dumb. And I think that's kind of the great play for these characters. And I guess all the mishaps that they really get into are based on like real crimes yeah. that went awry and just went went wrong. There's video of one of, of like almost exactly what they go through. Oh, like really? the, the security things go up and the guy is like pushing on the door and he's waiting there for like 15 minutes when all he had to do was open it. Oh, like, no. oh my God. It's, it's real. a real it's a real thing. Yeah. Wow, it's fucking nuts. The well, because convert- they're they're clearly idiots. Like you don't <laughs> you don't have Boris the Blade come in and tell you to rob this place a booking. Yeah, and even they're like, do you know who owns this booking? You know, yeah. like, <laughs> and obviously all, all bets are off. off. <laughs> She's off. <laughs> She she was like gonna be my punchable face until like I fell in love with her. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I appreciate it. I ain't telling it's a but fact. <laughs> yeah, it's like well I ain't selling it. It's, it's like fact. I ain't buying it. It's like well, I ain't selling it. It's a fact. <laughs> it's like it's like appreciated, <laughs> but, but all bets, bets. are all. I, I, like, dude, she I agree works with for well, What do you got? There's she like, works for Bricktop. She's got to be a fucking hard ass. <laughs> yeah, you know. Oh yeah, she's been dealing with like jackasses coming in all the time, <laughs> yeah. and and. 
it's like, what the hell? the heck is that Vince like, you're gonna get us a gun he's like that's an anti-aircraft gun <laughs> <laughs> it's a, like the massive shotgun blowing holes through there like Heard it's the shot that's in the movie mm-hmm. like he was using that shotgun and it blew back on him and it hit him in the nuts oh and like that's like he was kind of ailing when he gets to the the hole in the wall and that's real he's like hit him in the nuts so like guy like Richie that. would use takes like that like when people <laughs> got hurt he would just like use them because he th- thought it was funny ah, it makes sense uh, I, and it also it, it also, this is something that just, it keeps getting worse and worse. They go in, okay, they don't have anything to actually rob. Well, what do you do have? We've got some coins. So they got this, like, satchel of coins. Vinny's gotten cr- crammed into this this door. And and then he's trying to shoot the, the door out. And the, 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 the coin bag blowing is, like, this insult to injury... <laughs> Not even injury to anyway. insult scenario that is like this is what an absolute shit show yep. yeah. and it won't open because it's a security door. door and then they both look up at the camera with their masks <laughs> yeah. off i know oh that's and that's the best part too like it, it, you're right that that's even worse that's one step closer to how much much more of a shit show this and is and then tyrone bad. just like what are you two doing well, and it's played with Bricktop too, because they're they're such bad criminals, and it's obvious because they're not criminals. Yeah, because they don't even recognize. They're looking at the video, they're like, "I don't know who those twits are." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, but I do know who that is. Fucking Tyrone. Fucking Tyrone. <laughs> we did miss a part though. My, like oh. one of my favorite things was when Boris, <laughs> when Boris wanders into their shop to like propose the job to him. Yeah. yeah. And the dog runs out, <laughs> and he goes, he goes, "Oh, hey, Boris, don't worry about the dog." I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> he has no concern <laughs> over the dog. I would have been like, oh, shit, I'm so sorry, bro. Like, I didn't mean to let your dog. Are you sure? I He's like, I literally have no concern I over the I don't dog. care about this. <laughs> uh, it's like, I have a job for it. I've got a job, Boris. It's like, <laughs> 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 And you know that's fucking uh, that's what's his face Mighty from James. Lost. Yeah, he's he was in Lost recently, or not Lost, uh, Walking Dead. Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah, he was that character for a long mm. time, which mm. which I think Perfect I hadn't casting. seen Snatch since I've watched Walking Dead, so I I didn't re- recognize that until yeah. He was a bigger star, especially in London at that time too, and then obviously he's a big star in America. Yes, like huge. Yeah, I love that guy, Lenny James. Uh, what's the uh, so at this point though? I, I I this is maybe my only. This might be one of my few gripes, honestly, is kind of what happens to Frankie and kind of how his character is just like it was so prominent in the very beginning, literally almost starting the movie off with with him doing this great robbery and heist. And maybe, well, now talking about it, maybe that's the joke is like they play, they do this perfect heist and then everything from here is just bullshit because, you know, and he's in the back of the van well, what's he doing? Getting changing his clothes? He's, he like rented a van just to have really nice suits in it to change. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> clearly he loves he like he loves clothing. He, he likes bought, he bought finer all of things. Those. Yeah, he bought all suits. of those. And, and so he buys all these suits, and he's just in the back. He gets knocked out, mm-hmm. and then from when they backed into him. Yeah, and and it's this is just what happens to Frankie. We almost we never see his face again after this. Yeah, it's like for me, it's a. It's a little bit of a bummer, but at the same time, it's also a great play because this is when Boris just is just like, he couldn't know my name. And, <laughs> and he's he just slices gone. his arm off, and he, yeah, rolls he, it up in the newspaper and goes, well, <laughs> well see you well, later. Before this, we get the fight, right? No, so there's not been a fight yet. Um, or has there been? Yeah, yeah, actually yeah. he does. So he throws Mickey the first he, fight. Yeah. Like he's like, all built up and the fucking one punch just God. knocks him the fuck out and Bricktop is fucking furious and those idiots talk to him or whatever. But I love his line when the guy comes up to him and he's like, I lost a lot of money on you, Bricktop. Good job. Thanks for the tip. You stop me while I'm walking again, I'll cut your fucking Jacobs your off. fucking <laughs> Jacobs off. And like, like cuts him somewhere. <laughs> Pulls a so knife good. out very subtly. God, it's a great line. Yeah. I'll cut your fucking Jacobs off. <laughs> I mean, it's still to this day, the, these anytime Brad Pitt is fighting, it's still like the most like intense electrifying moments of this movie. Yeah. When yeah. just... Just his ability to just knock these fuckers out, and it looks real. Can you? It looks so much better than the, the new Roadhouse movie. It like, does. It it's really does. So perfect. Can you at least try to look like a fighter? He's <laughs> taking the cigarette out of his mouth. <laughs> he, he walks out. He goes, ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he just doesn't give a shit. He doesn't. Uh, but yeah, uh, like when Frankie Four Fingers is out of the movie, pretty much would be Benicio del Toro. But I like the aspect of this being like I don't know, like. Crime movies and Tarantino movies would do this a lot where they bring in this 
kind of he's kind of a MacGuffin character almost. Who's that? Uh, Frankie Four yeah. Fingers. Yeah, you're right. Um, where they bring it, but like you want a character actor to do it, you know, or like someone noticeable, and like the, maybe the audience kind of like uh, Psycho is like, oh, Benicio del Toro's gone. But you've had time to Im- immerse yourself into all of these other Correct. characters that you might not be familiar with as Benicio del Toro, especially as an American, you know. Sure. Um, that's what that's kind of what I like about it. But I can see the other way too. Yeah, it's 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 it, it, it is a MacGuffin because there's there's a reason that, that he is the reason that Avi actually came to London. Yeah. I hope you understand the concern that I have for my friend Frankie, <laughs> who has a gambling problem. Frankie fucking Four Fingers. You know why they call him Frankie Four Fingers? <laughs> Because he gets in with the wrong people, and they cut his fucking finger off. They give him the chop, Doug. They give him the chop, Doug. <laughs> well, then, okay, so here's a good time to talk about this theory. So if Turkish, like, I think Turkish gets too big for his britches, right? They're living in squalor right here in this weird little warehouse, like you pointed out. Yeah. And he feels the need that he needs this new caravan. Like, what do you need a new caravan for? Okay. If he does not do this, if he does not actually go buy this caravan here, then that means Gorgeous George actually does the fight. The fight goes down as planned. Mickey is nowhere near this, not even involved. We don't even meet him. All bets then are not off. They're that Those bookies are in full service, which means Vinny and Saul would have actually gone in after that guy that they went in. They would have realized it was not him, but they would have taken all the money from the bookies because remember, it was, there's just no money there. Right. So they lose their cool. They would have actually robbed them, taken the money, and left, which means they would have gotten out of there earlier, which means they would have not gotten locked in, and Frankie wouldn't have woken up yet, so they would have escaped with the money without seeing Frankie. They would have left. Frankie would have got out of his van, realized that, like, shit just got crazy. Like, I just need to do what I got to need to do. So he wises up. He goes straight to Doug the Head. Avi's already come over from London. Frankie lives. Avi takes the diamond to New York. Mickey's mom's still alive. Boris, Tony, Bricktop, Rosebud, they're all alive. Movie over. Oh, All man. because Turkish decided that he needed a new caravan. Yeah. This whole movie goes to shit. Don't Honestly. fix things ever. Don't fix Don't things. Don't fix it. Don't go outside ever. Oh, I actually, guys, I have an idea. Just to play on that, Mike. <clears throat> How about you just go to a caravan dealer? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a pikey camp, you I, know? I am a firm believer in hiring professionals. <laughs> yeah, like why don't you just like there's there's probably a, a place that that sells these actually. Well, you don't well, have to go to the worst I'm, place to buy. I'm a gangster, and everyone <laughs> fucking knows the shit. you're gonna save money, but you're gonna get a piece of shit. Gonna, they they the wheels fall off the second they drive yeah. off the lot. He's like, oh, they're they're nice. you bought it as you saw it. You bought it as you saw it. So she fuck off while you got the legs to carry out. <laughs> 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 fucking Jesus, like this. Just pay an extra five grand yeah. and get something that works. He had the money. <laughs> we saw it later on. Yes. He just gave 10 grand. He only wanted to. I mean, I got. Yeah, hey, I appreciate you setting the budget, Turkish. Business, business, man. <laughs> but at the same time, splurge a little bit so you can get one with the wheels don't fall off. Okay. You want a paycheck, don't you, Tommy? Yeah. Go buy a caravan from the Pikes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is one moment that I, I hope the TikTok gods will make for me. Please. Myself. Yeah. <laughs> this used to be the most rewindable moment of the movie for me and my buddy when we lived in college together. When when Turgis is backing up in the office, Errol's Ar- there, yeah, and yeah. he's backing up, and Bricktop's behind him, and he he hits him, and Bricktop goes, eh. eh. <laughs> <laughs> so he just goes, eh. <laughs> but I want it instead of the <laughs> eh. nasty ass. Instead of his eh, I want, I want Moby's <laughs> eh. <laughs> and then it just starts. <laughs> and, then, and then the song just keeps playing. It just keeps going up. and then that like that that song should be playing over the montage of them like breaking up the casino and all yes. this okay I, I, maybe the tiktok gods will make that but <laughs> <laughs> i dude i'm so glad you brought that up that just made me fucking i just had laughing. these polish I got, like I, always oh. got tea in his mouth. <laughs> I was Gross. watching. I was watching that movie this by myself at one point, and I saw that happen, and I almost I was crying laughing when <laughs> I saw that shit happen. <laughs> I, had to, I had to pause the movie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, let's do scene four. So Bricktop arrives to execute Vinny and Saul for robbing his bookies, but they're spared in order to find the diamond for Bricktop. Abby and Doug hire Bullet Tooth Tony to help them find Frankie. When the trail leads to Boris, they kidnap him and retrieve the gemstone. Tony follows Vinny and Saul back to their office to get the diamond, but the dog swallows it, jumps out the window. Avi jumps on a plane back to New York. I love this scene so much because... We've already learned a, lo- a lot about Bricktop and seeing what he can do and everything, <laughs> but to like have that reiterated by him in this scene is yeah. really fucking cool because uh, what you mean his- like the when he's talking about the pigs? Yeah. yeah. So uh, what's his name? Um, uh, the, their friend that comes in to help them. Yeah, I don't remember his name. Uh, yeah, they yeah. call him something. But um, he's like, you know I who do. I am? Oh, I do. <laughs> and I he do. sits down, Errol. Comes in and brings yes. him tea. They didn't know he was there. He just know? comes in, <laughs> gives him tea, and then he goes back out to feel, continue setting up the like room. He owns setting this up place the Dexter now. room. Or yeah, 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 like yeah. This, this place is his now. It's no longer theirs, you know? And so he's like, they go through bone like butter. Like butter. Hence, it's greedy as a, a pig. <laughs> it's gross. But it's so good. But yeah, I, I really do like, you know, who, who once again, who the fuck are you? You know, <laughs> that kind of shit. It's really funny that they don't know. And they're ab- and that's how bad of criminals they are. They're they don't about even know who to Brick be Top brutally is. murdered. <laughs> yeah. He's like, well, you because they say I think his, his name's uh, Link or Lincoln, uh, their, their friend, because in the beginning, it's like, leave the bad leave boy yard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Leroy. But, uh, Lincoln, yeah, Lincoln. Lincoln. And he says because he brings in that he's like, it's it's fake. It's Masonite. It's Molsonite. With fuck all. Fuck all. <laughs> And it's like, leave that stuff to us. Like, you just continue being a criminal or being a gangster. gangster. And then it comes back. It's like, I know who you are. Because I'm a gangster. (laughs) They aren't gangsters. (laughs) Leave the gangstering to to fucking Lincoln. Yeah. And you don't, you guys stick to what you know. Yeah. It's a great little flip around. Yeah, that's true. For those characters. And then, but the whole time, I feel bad for like, because Vinny is literally sitting, it's like, Will somebody please explain who the fuck you are? Because he gets done with his pigs thing, and then he stands up, and you're like, okay, cool, he's going to introduce himself. Do you know what nemesis means? He's like, fuck! <laughs> God, <laughs> tell me who you are! Like, he's please. been practicing this scene forever. Yeah. Like He's like, I'm going to say it. It's kind of like Jules yeah, in Pulp exactly. <laughs> Yeah, This is some badass shit I would say to a motherfucker before I popped the cap in his ass. And, and yeah, he's like, I rehearsed this. I'm not going to not say it to these guys because they, they fucked me over. They tried to anyways. Yeah. So. so this is a good point to talk about the soundtrack, Sean, because there are in this whole scene we just did, there are two undeniable like moments that are etched in my brain that only work because of the combination of the music and the, the cinematography. Yeah. The, the hair and Tyrone scene. Mm. Where where Mir- Mirwise Disco Science is playing, yeah. where where the dogs are chasing the yes. hair, while also Tyrone is being chased, mm-hmm. like that, you do not have any. You can't make this better with any other song. Yeah, I I just don't know what it is. The first time I saw this, I was mesmerized by yeah, I mean, the song choice. It's like any Tarantino soundtrack. It's just cemented. You can no longer think about that song without thinking about you whatever can't. scene that is, and, and you can't think about the scene without thinking of the song. Very true. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very you you. You make it so iconic and synonymous with something like this, you know, and it's just like he did. He didn't write to a soundtrack like Tarantino usually yeah, does. He had the song in mind already, kind of right. When not even that, he didn't write to any music. He was just like he made the movie, and he was like, okay, what's up? Because a lot of these stories that he told were inspired by like stories he heard in pubs. Yeah, He's yeah, like, yeah. What did I hear in pubs? Oh, massive at- cool. like massive attack was in pubs. You know, the Stranglers was always, was always in pubs. So he just went through like a rolodex of what songs he had heard while he went to pubs. While writing the movie, kind of, you know, well, and that's yeah. the other one, dude. Um, I, I was a massive attack fan, like, massive, I, massive I still attack. am. I'm a massive, massive attack fan. Uh, but but when when they play when they play Angel in this movie, yeah, and it and it goes over two different scenes, which is the song's so perfect for it. First, it's them thrashing the arcade, mm-hmm. the kind of slow motion, right? And then it's like, and if that wasn't enough, he set his caravan on fire with his mom inside, yeah. with his mom inside, and, and Brad Pitt crying. And like fighting again with the flames coming off of his eyeballs while that song is playing, it's just like uh, you the can't break, the break after that like kind of breakdown is like doom 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 yes. doom doom like the song's settling down and it's just the fight oh it's so good and the, and this is where it changes for Mickey it's yeah. it's ultra personal for Mickey here and we see it happen in his eyeballs there it's just like it's perfection mm-hmm. it's that moment that 
that scene it's so it's so dirty it's so raw like it's him in his underwear and he's <laughs> yeah. just fighting his dirty ass like, underwear dirty ass underwear just him fighting against and and it takes two three four of them to hold him back and you know he just wants so bad and then then there is that where it cuts back again because uh, the slow motion burn of the caravan and then it cuts to him and then there's the raging like full full speed of it and it is just it's like a it's it just it's devastating yeah that moment where it is just engulfed it's devastating and then it cuts back again and then he goes back to fighting again <laughs> and Dude, uh, before there's any more carnage yeah <laughs> <there's any> carnage. <laughs> well and then i have to it's off of the soundtrack madonna lucky star <laughs> you know and vinnie jones is <laughs> bullet to oh, tony song. his introduction Dude. is maybe my favorite where he's like you die you die <laughs> now like that guy's shooting him like six times yeah. or whatever the or fucking he mullet he's got you're, you're in trouble now <laughs> fucking love that. and this is where this is where we may transition into like i think he's my favorite okay like, so far it was avi but then at this point like bullet tooth tony oh Dude, my Vin god Vinny jones <laughs> we've had him in gone in 60 seconds we've had now this like i think you know he Vinny jones is is a treasure, yeah. Like of a, of a character actor, and he plays these kind of guys so great. I hear he's like nicest dude ever, or yeah. something. But like every time you get him on screen, and his introduction to this though too, uh, even before that, or, or no, <laughs> they say it. No, it's, they're in the. <laughs> it's, it's the call. It's like we'll call him up. He's like, what are we waiting for? And he's just plugging that <laughs> dude in the door. And then he gets to the phone. He's like, bonjour. bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> That that is burned into my brain. Even when they and then they finally get him in the office, and Tony's like, "Dude, he's former Russian KGB, like can't be killed. He will be impossible to track down." <laughs> Dad, someone's here. <laughs> His name's Boris. He's looking to speak with you. And they and Boris is looking in the camera. Like he's impossible. Boris is impossible to track down. He's here. He's right there. <laughs> he literally walked in the door. It's <laughs> brushing his hair back in the security in, camera. In the camera. He's <laughs> checking himself out. <laughs> that uh that doc, that little uh, interview with Guy Ritchie, he said that when they were making lock stock, speaking of Vinnie Jones is like just outstanding niceness as a person mm. in general. He said like they didn't have a place to stay like when they went to L.A. to kind of shop the film. And Vinnie Jones is, I, seems well off, I guess, for like other things that he's done. Um, he had a place in L.A. and so he would like is he, he, is he would he British. Yeah, okay. British. Yeah. Uh, but guy would come and be like, yeah, you can stay with me, dude. Vinnie Jones to Guy Ritchie, and uh, he's like, oh yeah, just take this bed. He's like, I'm not like that's your bed, Vinnie. I'm not gonna take that bed. He's like, oh no, I have a spare in the next room. Guy Ritchie had never been in the next room. <laughs> he he wakes up and Vinnie Jones is on the couch. He just didn't like think anything of it. Like he was he was always like oh, on wow. set. Like, do you need anything right now? I'm not I'm not doing anything. I do you love need anything? that. Like he would just be a, a very um, you know uh, usherer of trying to get things done and trying to have a good time while doing it, you know. If you guys uh if you get just a quick little tidbit, there's uh there's a show called The Gen Gentleman mm -hmm. on Netflix now. He has a role in that where he's kind of a he's the land and caretaker of his property and estate based on the movie The Gentleman Guy Ritchie mm -hmm. film and it's kind of a continuation of that from the flip side of one of these aristocratic like property owners. And uh, but he's got a great role in that, and it's a little bit more of a departure from what we normally see Vinnie Jones as. Great role though, great show. Check it out; it's very, awesome. very good. But yeah. Based off of how nice he is in real life, it's it's um, unbelievable how terrifying he can be. Yeah. He, when uh, they yeah. when he's sitting there at the pub with his with this frosty one from the governor, uh, like <clears throat> the the replica speech. Where he's like staring at him and goes, because I know it says replica on the side it's of your gun. So and he goes, good. You go, <laughs> and on the side of my gun, it says Desert Ego 0. 0.50. <laughs> like that, that if, if anyone else got hold of that scene and tried to do what he just did there, I think it'd be cheesy. Yeah. But for some reason, this isn't cheesy at all. It's like a dedication, like it's, it's a commit to the bit sort of thing that. Vinnie Jones plus Guy Ritchie equals <laughs> badassery. Yes, you know what I mean. Like it is. It's. I think you're. But I think you're 100 percent right. It's not too many people would be able to pull that off nope. and give the proper cadence and, like Vinnie Jones yes. would. Yeah. And then even like, how do you feel about this kind of out of sync crash scene? I think it's very clever. Uh, to be honest, I I think it's maybe not even needed, but I think it's a cool way to just kind of.
like like I say, the economy of time. Just kind yeah. of get these things, get, get these perspectives out of the way, and it makes it funny, especially with Boris not dying ever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? And it's like, where's Boris? And, <laughs> you know, it's fucking. It's I don't know. I think it adds a lot to the comedy of the of the movie. It's it's like you didn't have to put him out of sync like that, um, but but it just it always keeps me guessing. I always kind of forget every time I watch it. Like, oh shit, oh that's right. This happened to them, and that happened to them. Like it, it always keeps me guessing in a weird way. I also see a director who's just like, I want to try things. Why not? I got a budget now. I want to try stuff. Mm. And, and so he's, you know, messing with some time in his movies. You know, I, I really like that about it. Yeah. The best, the best part about that whole sequence though is when Boris is on the road and his head's covered and he's going. <laughs> <laughs> he's like kind of feeling walk, around. He's kind of with his feet, like, and it takes forever. It takes like ten seconds before <laughs> yeah. the car hits, and it looks like the car really <laughs> yeah. hits. It him, does. By the way. It does. Oh, it, my God. Because getting to see it from the, the first perspective of inside the car, them hitting him, and then, and then like, him, <laughs> the idea of him feeling you, around. You know he's going to get hit, yeah. but yet it just takes forever. <laughs> and I think, that's, I think that's what certainly adds to this out of sync, you know, idea mm-hmm. is we know what's going to happen. It kind of, it's very much like the Pulp Fiction thing we yeah. talked about. It kind of alleviates the stress. Okay. Yeah, we kind of yeah. know what's going to happen, and it kind of takes it out of it, so it makes a little bit more of a fun feel rather than it just being extremely dark. Yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> it, so it does kind of help in that regard. Um, but 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 if, and at this point, we've already seen. Have we seen uh, Avi shoot up? Every everyone it's else, j- it's at it's the end good. of the scene. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're we're here. We're basically yeah. there. I mean, that part right there. Come on, Tony. Let's go. Let's get. There's going around. Tony. Tony. <laughs> it's kind of sad. That's the end of Tony. We don't. I see think it. it's super sad. I do it's too. funny, though. Like, I love how they don't show it at all. And it's just Dennis Farina being like, oh. Oh. <laughs> and then he hops oh. back on a plane. <laughs> and he's just, yeah. He's gone. His same three <laughs> second declare, sequence. Yeah, don't go to London. Yeah, don't go to London. <laughs> and, and, but, and, and, it's the same thing so with anything to declare. Yeah, here's the declaration. <laughs> fucking and Boris the Blade just boom, boom, boom. It's like this is where Austin Powers or did Austin Powers get it yeah, from, maybe. from here or, or was Austin know. Powers before this? I think it was 2001. Was Austin? No, maybe. Was that 98? Oh man, the first Austin oh, Powers maybe movie. 99. Hold on. Yeah, because he like. Oh, uh, dude, 97 was the 97. first Austin Powers. 99 was Spy Who Shagged Me. So, dude, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just, I'm gonna say like Mustafa. Like, <laughs> just, I'm very, I'm very, very bad. It's, it's, it's starting to smell a bit like almonds. It's like the other one there. He's, that's a great bit, and yeah. the fact that they just he just keeps shooting him, and he goes over and stands over him again. He's like. <laughs> and so, by the way, Tyrone lives then. Yeah, right? what makes me sad about it is that he was going to shoot Tyrone and he's out of yeah. bullets. It's like, lucky you bastard. Lucky, lucky bastard. So, t- so, like, we're assuming Tyrone's alive after this. And yeah, he just he, so. he just fucking bolts. Yeah. He's like, I'm like out Abby, here. he's like, I'm going back I'm home. I'm the hell out of yep. here. Yeah, I'm done with that. All right, so final scene, scene five. Mickey refuses to fight again, so Bricktop burns his caravan. We already talked about that, killing mm. Mickey's mother. Mickey's forced to fight, but instead of going down in the fourth, he knocks out his opponent. Mickey's men kill Bricktop and his men as they exit the fight. The next morning, Turkish and Tommy find the Pikey campsite deserted, but pick up a dog to avoid police questioning. They keep the dog, find the diamond inside of him. Avi returns from London, or to London, I should say. I have to say, like, drunk pikey's like when he's kind of grieving over his mother after the funeral and everything like that um that's like one of the most accurate like drinking binge scenes that i've ever seen in my life of just Mm. like they're picking him up he's like leaking vomit out of his mouth you know it's really brutal didn't we just talk about um oh it was in it was in pulp fiction and we're referencing that quite a bit but I like I, I actually believed that Travolta like was on heroin kind of yeah. like yeah. I actually believe that Brad Pitt is fucking hammered absolute yeah. piss drunk pants shitting drunk basically yes. yeah and yeah. he lo- and he looks so bad the next morning too when oh. they come and get him and he's <laughs> <laughs> they're waking him up and he's on the couch. <laughs> oh, oh. Like, uh, hey, give, 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 give. need to have a shite. Need to have a shite. <laughs> 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 and even before the fight started, you get that scene where um oh never mind. Sorry, that was something different. Yeah. I do want to say that we kind of miss it's it's uh, it's again. I think it happened. It's like uh, it's like from Boris the Blade. He's like it's like I'm I'm not saying you can't shoot it. I'm saying it doesn't work, the gun. <laughs> and he's and and they're just driving down and he's like <laughs> Dude, time Whoops. out. Time out. We got to talk, talk about Tommy. <laughs> who, who plays Tommy? Steven, Steven Graham. Graham. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm starting to change my mind. He's one of my favorites in this movie. He's a, yeah, yeah. He's a lovable fact even he's to a, me. Apparently a fine too. Like, you know, like like I said in the beginning, it's and now he's had an illustrious yeah. Oh, yeah. And this was his outstanding first standing career, you know, like with Scorsese <laughs> several times. Oh yeah. Uh Boardwalk, Boardwalk Empire. Empire is Al Capone. Al Capone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's done some amazing stuff and he is amazing. Every time he is one that of these freeze guys. Frame on his face. Or it doesn't freeze, it, but him yeah. putting <laughs> <laughs> So that's good. What, I've shot a couple, gun a couple times. That's what I look like. If you're gonna <laughs> fire a gun out the window of a moving car, you'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> "No, that's what I look like." And like he's very heavily Irish or Scottish, something like that. Something like that, yeah. And uh, to even have like this convincing protection. of a of a London accent, you know, yeah. is very convincing. And like even like his Boardwalk Empire performance and uh, you know uh, the Irishman. I could believe he's American too. Like yeah. he's really good at accents. Absolutely. Like he is one of those guys I will watch in anything. If he mm-hmm. is in it, then I want to see what he does. And he, he's great. I, I really do like his performance in this. I like that. He kind of has his hero moment yeah. throughout this when he kind of saves Turkish. Um, but it, and, and then his back and forth with brick top and everything. <laughs> We're changing the fire. He's a, he's, Oh, we lost George. Where'd you lose him? He's not exactly a set of fucking car keys. Now is he? Oh, Jesus Christ, your girlfriend got a mouth now. <laughs> Bricktop loves Tommy. <laughs> loves Tommy. <laughs> it's like a shut up Donnie kind of thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like one more time on the boxing here. Yes. I mean, yeah. of all these boxing scenes, this is our longest one. And and if you thought, oh, it's just all you got to do is capture one good punch on camera and everybody's happy. This whole scene is perfection, yeah. dude. Like it's really good. And, and I know we're fresh off a review in the new Roadhouse. But I cannot help but compare it to it. Yep. About how look at how easy this was. This look. is twenty four years earlier. They made it look easy, anyways. Like you, you know, they like you can do it. They made it look so good. It, you're man. right. I I was this is exact my note in this is that it looks so much better than movies today, dude. Like, and it's even kind of doing the same kind of t- Matthew Vaughn is producing this thing. He's the one that did like all those Kingsman stuff where all that shit I okay. think kind of came okay. from. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it just looks so much better. And it's it is a lot of cuts and a lot of filmmaking. And I know like maybe and speed they, ramps and stuff you were talking about yeah, too. A lot yeah, of speed ramps and like they wanted to do maybe in Roadhouse they wanted to do a lot more like immersive kind of thing, but it, it takes me out of it. It yeah. does the opposite, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, I really think that this is the way to go. All of those punches look look like they hurt, <laughs> and they look real. And yeah, I and the the shot of, of Brad Pitt like f- going basically per- uh, parallel with the ground. It's brilliant. I, I just can't. I, I just I want to see the behind the scenes of how they did that because I mean he did it. I, th- there's a little half hour documentary on what? YouTube uh, and, of that and, shot or, well, what? or of just this like thing. the making of it. But they show a little bit of this and they show him like it's just like that was like a green screen pretty much and they just of kind of did that with him and let, like, they told him, him just jump back made him, made him fall on a mat and then the underwater stuff was like that. Oh. I'm, I'm assuming that's that's what it feels like when you're fighting in dreams anyway. It has to like be. you're underwater, you know. Um, and so being like kind of knocked out or dazed, I imagine that's what that feels like. So it works yeah. really well for me. But then like there's scenes of him like in the water <laughs> tank, like about to do like the punch that n- does knock him out. You <laughs> it's know, so good. it's really cool. You, got chills. you should check it out. But that, um, yeah. he came up with that guy. Richie was like saw a video from uh, uh, Jonathan Glazer, who was who just did the new Oscar movie Zone of Interest kind of thing. <clears throat> and really good filmmaker. But he saw a music video of. Radiohead that he directed where they did some speed ramping stuff of like a guy falling backward on t- uh, in a chair and that's kind of where he came up with this technique he's like wow. I'm, I'm going to use that in a movie again like Guy Ritchie just be like seeing things and being like I want to try that I want to do that he's burgeoning kind of finding his voice and that's another reason why I like this movie yeah that's 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 the kind of stuff that's amazing to hear you know that you see so- like the director saw something at one point and was like I'm going to keep that in the back I'm going to keep that in the back of my head Keep that in the toolbox. And watching Brad Pitt, like, I could watch this scene for, like, over and over again. Him going up that high, dropping back. But it is. It's that that comeback. That final shot. Yeah. With, <laughs> and, boom, boom, boom. and when Fight like, over. he gets, like, it's that freeze frame of him, like, going like this. And it's yeah. just like, he just, he looks like he's being punched, dude. Yes. Like, I don't know. I think a lot of nothing that is Brad like Pitt that. Yeah. just being an incredible actor. Nothing actually. like in Roadhouse makes me think that anybody's being punched. Yeah. <laughs> And and uh, again, we get to this point where we kind of find out. It's, it's 
now now I feel like the the Pikey planned it like this, you know. And he, you kind of learn a little bit about Mickey's motives, even of why he never goes down in a fight yeah, when he's supposed to, or he when always he, bets on himself. he always bets on himself. And um, and getting to see that that freeze frame of yes, them and imagine, the description of it. Imagine the heart attack oh, they, God, they so just good. had. Oh, dude. I know. <laughs> oh my God. And we don't see it. We just see their faces reacting yeah. right. to it. It's it, brilliant, man. And, and it, it is. It's like it's the the stupid look on your face. Why didn't the Pikey have <laughs> like look at, have a look on his face? Because he knew. And it, oh man, it's so good. And it's so great to see like you know it's such a satisfying like redemption it to really watch is. Bricktop get his his guys who are waiting at that Pikey camp to get theirs. That kind of stuff. It's it really is. Uh, it's so satisfying. Well, and the the interesting thing about this is like. Brad Pitt and the Pikeys are not the good guys here. No, no, but they're like they're pretty monstrous as well. But we're kind of like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's because so Brick interesting. Yes, yeah, correct. He, he he is he is the asshole. They're the dicks, and that's it. Sometimes dicks got to fuck assholes. Sometimes, too. so good analogy. AJ. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, Alfred. Works uh, perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but <laughs> but no, I. You're right. They are like, but in all honesty, they shouldn't even be involved with this in the first place. Yep. Going back to your your That's talk, what, I'm saying. You, yeah. what you were talking about, they they got brought into it, and then now they got themselves out of it. Right. And, and I do love they do go back to the campsite, and of course, it's completely moved up in the middle of the night. They're gone when when they get so lucky and so fast thinking to here comes the dog, and they don't know that that dog has the diamond in it. Right. Oh, no, yeah. So they just are like, oh, real quick, yeah, we got our dog, and Tommy's. Daisy, come on, Daisy. Daisy. Good, good boy, Daisy. Good boy, Daisy. I'm like, Daisy, good boy. <laughs> yeah, I know. And the cops are like, whatever. I don't even, or the, or well, the whatever they call. It loves that dog. Like, the first scene where we see like pretty much any cops, you know, yes. like we see That's this whole point. story like come like happen pretty much to us, and there's been no cops, and then this whole thing wraps up with cops arresting pretty much everybody except Tommy and. Uh, Jason Statham's character. That, that dang squeaking. The only reason that they mm-hmm. like had the surgery done was because of the squeaking. Don't snatch. Don't snatch. Oh. See? Oh, oh wait. Oh, that's why it's that's called. That's why it's called snatch. Oh. It's, like, it's like when you're watching this for the somebody seen it for the first time, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> they said snatch. Uh, right. Uh, you see? Because the dog snatched that's where the, they got the diamond. All right. Yeah. I have a last question for you. So. So Avi gets on the plane again and comes back. The, oh, end, uh, the uh, end, right? He uh, looks at the uh, yeah. He looks at the di- the diamond. And he's like, yeah, p- cool. The end. What happens after this? I have three in my mind. I have three scenarios. Uh, what if Avi just kills them and takes the diamond? Because think about it. The whole idea was stealing the diamond so that then you make full profit on the diamond. Now he's having to buy this mm. from them. So what if he? What if they just kill? Uh, Tommy and, and Turkish. Uh, Turkish and keep it. That's option number one. Number two is, does Avi just buy it from them and like for a cheaper rate? <clears throat> and he just kind of counts his losses and says, fine, I'll make a couple mil on this, but here's a couple mil for you. Or maybe a little more out in left field, what if Saul and Vinny, who have now been arrested, completely spill the beans on everything that has happened? They, yeah. know, they know who has the dog. They're like, oh, it's those fuckers that just drove by. Like, I, We'll figure out who they are. They saw Abby accidentally kill Tony. Mm. See, they know everything. So what if they now are able to direct the cops to say, I know where dead bodies are, I know where the diamond is, and the cops show up and arrest everyone right there, right after the cut. Yeah. And and Avi and Turkish and Tommy all go to jail right there for that. Avi shows up just in time to be arrested with all of them. I like what do you think? I mean, they painted it as a as a fun, happy ending, but I like to think that Avi gets there and is something like as soon as all of these characters start to interact or start to like get together in any <laughs> sense, chaos. Okay. Yeah. And so something else happens. <laughs> Who's who's still <laughs> out there? <laughs> no, Boris comes back to life. <laughs> <laughs> Please, he's a zombie now. <laughs> Please, there, like, isn't there some? So, well, Tyrone is still out there Tyrone's too. Tyrone's still out there too. You yeah. know, I'm the trying Pikes to think. Are still out there. Yeah, I'm trying to think of who else has like a who has like some sort of tie to this that might come back and who also knows Doug the Head, that creepy dude. Yeah, Dad, you told us. Yeah, Dad, you told us. <laughs> You're looking at those diamonds on the, the models. And like, ah, get your hands off her. Ah. Guy, Guy Ritchie also said that he wished his next movie 
would have been uh, like a sequel to this. It would have been amazing. Right? He still has one in his head. Well, maybe oh, he man. can then tell us what happens maybe. at the end of this. Maybe right. he's already got an idea. Reach hey, out, Guy. Guy Ritchie, sponsor us and uh, come on. And <laughs> <laughs> do, it, do an interview so we can talk about Snatch 2. Haven't oh. you ever wanted to record your conversations yeah. with your friends? Double. <laughs> <laughs> That's Let's what a podcast is. Can we call? Should we call it double snatch or like? Oh! Huh? huh? I guess. Should we call it <laughs> snatch? Snatched. Snatches. Snatching. Yeah. Okay. Guys, we have dissected <laughs> snatch. We did really good until that point. We so dissected sorry. it with yeah. a modern eye. It is time to give it a modern day rating. This is important, AJ. We it was pretty high on our nostalgic list. How are you feeling about it, modern day? Modern day. Honestly, I feel just as good, if not. Maybe, maybe even a little bit better. I'm. I have to say, because watching this movie, we talk about it all the time. Like, what are some of the what are some of the things that make a movie go down from your nostalgic, you know, rating? Like being able to go the entire way through it without feeling bored. You know, not having that third act feel like a like a, a drain or like a chore to get through. You know, being able is it quotable? Is it is it fast paced enough? Is there enough character development? Is there you know it, are there things that I want to rehash? Um, and, I, and there's plenty of other aspects, right? But in all honesty, this is one of those that I don't think there's ever a point that I really feel bored uh, in the movie. I think all the characters are great. The only thing that felt like a drop-off was, unfortunately, Benicio Del Toro. It was just kind of felt like cut short uh, in the movie, but... That kind of has to happen to a degree. You've got so many big faces, names, and stars in this thing that you got to give room, right? Um, I think it's a great movie, man. And I think that this is a, a movie like made in this time is was something very special. I think that I think that Guy Ritchie was doing a lot of new and exciting things and brought a lot of a lot of great faces to the forefront uh, uh, for, for his movies. So um, guys, I think I'm going to stick right around. I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for an 8.95. Nice. 8.9 or five. Yeah. Sean, or what do you got? There's really not a lot uh, of negatives I can think of for this movie. Um, I think it's really fucking well made. The cast is incredible. The soundtrack is incredible. I think, seeing Guy Ritchie make this movie and try out new things and it work for the movie, knowing that it would work probably, um, is really fucking awesome. And it just, it, it seriously inspired me when I first watch it, just like Tarantino did. Um, just like, of you know, needle drops and music and just filmmaking in general. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. I did this. I, I would be a 10, I guess if it, if it wasn't just for maybe, it's some of it's a little dated, I guess, and it's not. It's it's just picking picking at this point. But I'm gonna go 8.5 with this. I love this movie so much. 8.5. I'm sliding this into my top 10 for sure. This is uh, that I can't. I am I am famous for going back and looking at my other movies because I want to be true to. I want I want our modern day ratings to be like true to what the ultimate gospel is. So there's a few that I. This fits right around the Big Lebowski, Shaun of the Dead mm, era for me. Nice. Like these, they're. Those are all just such similar, perfect movies. But for me, I'm going to slide it just below both of those. But that is still a top 10. That's an 8.75 for nice. me. Bud Larson says, I have this on DVD and Voodoo. This was an all-star cast. Vinnie Jones and Dennis Farina are hilarious in this movie. I laugh my ass off at Robbie G. Robbie G? Robbie Gee? Gee, yeah, Robbie uh, Gee. Yeah, something like that. I don't think I've seen him in anything else. I have a few friends that get in and out of their car like Tyrone, <laughs> and I like to think <laughs> back to this movie and laugh. The best is when someone refuses to parallel park, and I say, you can land a jumbo fucking jet in there. <laughs> I agree with you. I watch this with subtitles on, and when Tommy and Turkish ask Mickey to fight again, and Mickey wants a caravan, the subtitles read, question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> Five question marks because they didn't even know what Mickey said. I used to tell people my grandfather had a pig farm. So basically, this movie is about stealing a diamond, underground boxing, and trying not to get eaten by pigs. I would watch this again. I laughed my ass off watching this watching Snatch this time around. Most punchable face, brick top. He, I mean, All right. come on. Yeah. He's absolutely right. right. Prop from the movie would be the briefcase with the diamonds. He's going full diamond plus briefcase. I actually like that briefcase a lot, those little secret compartments. Yeah, yeah little compartments cool. in it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Put your, uh, you know. Yeah, you put your reason there or some something. Yeah. In there. Yeah. 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 Modern day rating 9.3. <sighs> Fellas, that wow. takes us to an 8.3. 
eight. Wow. As a group, our modern day rating, 8.88, is going to slide it in all by itself at number nine. Uh, that's going to be right below Big Lebowski, right above Shaun of the Dead. Look at that. Wow. Weird how that in works, the top isn't 10, it? In man. Holy shit. In the shit. top 10. Mr. Michael. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for being here. Tune in next week. Biodome is out of jail, mm -hmm. and it's time. You've been yelling at us. You've been like, give us a full episode. We'll see if you still feel that way when it's over. Yeah. And man, then we just had such a good time. Yeah. I know. Weird. But hey, but then we follow it up with Days of Thunder. It's about damn time. Okay, all right. It's about damn time we talk about that. And if you are new to the podcast, go back this time last year. We did Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. That is a <laughs> unbelievably funny episode. That you was would a never, fun. You would never so think fun. that a Harry Potter review would be as funny as that is. Go back and listen to it. That might be a top tier episode to, to really revisit, guys. <laughs> For some reason... That came out pretty solid. I think we were suds in that day too. Like yeah. I think, I think it really helped us. <laughs> Let's out. just get hammered the night before we we record. Well, we always. What should, do you think guys. today is? Bro. Yeah, uh, come on. So, oh man, I yeah. Bed at eight o'clock. <laughs> Lucky. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening to the show and uh, enjoying the show. Got to give a big shout out to uh, who are the names? Uh, uh, Kim and Tate. No, I'm just kidding. It's uh, uh, Tim and Kate uh, that I met last night at Michael's show. Oh, and nice. They said hi and that they really enjoyed the show. They had Travis Malik was also there last night. There you got go. to meet him. Yeah, we yeah. got a lot of people showing up. Yeah. A lot of crossover. Nice. Super, super cool. So uh, thanks for saying hi and uh, that you're listening to the show. We really do appreciate it. We appreciate all you guys listening to the show. Check us out on YouTube in the studio, making good times in here and drinking drinks. Um, check us out on social media as well at Confused Breakfast. Just search for Confused Breakfast anywhere on the social media. And by all means, guys, leave us a review. Hit subscribe because most people don't subscribe when they're listening to podcasts. Hit subscribe. Leave us a review anywhere you're listening. Go to confusedbreakfast.com on the internet and you can see the merch that we have. You can see some shirts. You can see some sweatshirts. You can see some hats. You can get some stickers. Whatever. Uh, you can go to Not Your Father's Beer Shirts and get some uh, uh, Steve Kuzer koozies. And then that same damn website, you can see the ratings of the movies that we've all done. You can see AJ's ratings. You can see my ratings. You can see Mike's ratings. You can see the show's overall. And you can see that uh, Snatch is now in the top 10. That's kind of fun. We got to go see Caitlin Clark win the championship. We do. We have to. Best basketball player in history. Also, the website address for our Patreon is http colon forward slash forward slash patreon.com forward slash confused breakfast oh, gotcha okay. nice. so uh, that's where you should go on the internet you, you right? have to type that exactly in on the internet to get to that's how you directly support us you go there you do that once again that is http colon <laughs> <laughs> Logan's looking at us like Logan's I gotta go. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's fine. Logan's you can also on go to Dave Morgan is trash dot com. <laughs> Actually, I forgot. Hey, go to Dave Morgan is trash dot com. That goes to confusedbreakfast dot com. So uh, we can we can press cut, Logan. No, yeah. no, we're <laughs> produced by Upload Media Group. We got Logan on the controls. We are the Cloud Ten uh, Network. Cloud Ten FM. That's it for us. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Oops. Wow. We I was did purposely it. doing good. Logan's looking at me like, are you fucking serious? trying to cut time? Thank you.